It's Wednesday night, and that means it's time for the Lamar Thomas Show, featuring the greatest receiver in the history of college football. Just ask them, Lamar Thomas. I was born in uh, Ocala, Florida. I moved to Gainesville to go to high school. Been recruited probably since the ninth grade, illegally, I might add, by the University of Florida. I, I still can remember Coach Solinger, Don Solinger, coming out to our practice one day. Here it is, this guy comes out in the University of Miami jacket and, and I, I said, I can't believe that's Miami out here. And you know, I wanted to go up and say, hey, I'm Lamar Thomas. And, and actually, I, I did walk up to him and I said, hey coach, uh, I'm Lamar Thomas. And he said, I know. And that was the start of my uh, relationship with the uh, University of Miami. Had another good block and Toretta lays it out. come down here, you'll be on TV every weekend dominating. I thought about it. I said, man, where do I sign? My mom, uh, on Saturday mornings, I would wake up and she'd be holding my hand. I thought she was the weirdest lady in the world. <laughs> but she was holding my hands and she would be rubbing them and saying, one day these hands are gonna make you a lot of money. <laughs> um, she was smart. So now, here he is. The great one, along with co-host Gary Furman of Kingsport.com, Lamar Thomas. The great one. He's literally in the building tonight. In the building at Boat Camper Sports Bar and Grill in Miramar. That's the right, Lamar Gary. <laughs> you see that big smile on my face? You, you are so happy. They must, be, they must be feeding you, Lamar. <laughs> man, my man Ray is taking care of me up in here, man. It's all good, man. This is a lovely spot. Look at this. Look at this. Got a menu. Got both campers up in the house. I'm excited. Look, oh, you see that number five back there? Andre Johnson. That man was a killer. Look at him back there on the wall. You see it? He back there. There he is. Oh, is that a touchdown against Florida? He <laughs> sure was. Against the Gators. What's up, Gary? How you doing, man? Doing great, man. And if, if all goes well tonight, hopefully we'll be joined by another number five uh, later in the show. Uh, Keyshawn Smith, who arrived on the scene. And uh, I'll wait to tell the stories till later. But uh, the kid is showing incredible potential and uh, really signs that he could be the next great receiver at Miami. We'll, we'll, we'll see how that goes. But um, the Lamar Thomas show week three, it's the, the third week of, of the season. And uh, it's been an inter interesting one so far, Lamar. I mean, we went up to Alabama, went through that experience, came back against Appalachian State. And I think uh, you and I are in agreement on this. We were looking for some style points um, this week and, and, and a little bit more of a convincing victory than, than what we ended up getting. Uh, so let's start there. Uh, your thoughts on what you saw at Hard Rock Stadium on Saturday. I mean, obviously, when we when we first looked at the schedule, you know, we 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 circled them and said, okay, that's the win. We move on to the next game. Maybe Michigan State might be okay, but Appalachian State had some other uh, ideas. They came in and played a really really tough game. Uh, they played uh, probably I, I wouldn't say the best that they could have played, but they they didn't back down. They had an opportunity to actually maybe win the ball game. Uh, Miami was able to capitalize on some uh, some key plays, uh, some turnovers, uh, and, and got – I wouldn't say lucky, but they won the game. And uh, W, at, at this juncture in, in, in the game after a loss at Alabama, was well needed. I mean, I know we got a lot of fans out there uh, wanted to blow this team out, wanted to have something to build on, but the W, it definitely goes a long way. We, we had a lot of close games back in the day. And they're, they're still wins. They still go down as wins. Now, if you can uh, take the the mistakes 
the negatives and build upon them, uh, you'll be able to go out against the next opponent and, and play better, hopefully. So uh, let's talk about the offense first. Uh, mm -hmm. They kind of like they were lighting it up in, in preseason camp, all throughout fall camp, all three scrimmages. The offense really got the better of all three of them. The scrimmage two was a little bit back and forth, but the reviews of the offense were absolutely glowing. Uh, it has not shown up yet on game day. Now, you obviously have played a, a lot. You've coached college football a lot. Uh, how do you kind of put all that together and explain, you know, some of the struggles that they've been having? Well, I mean, it's right there in front of us. I mean, you know, they, they haven't been able to, to dominate like what we might have heard or seen out of the spring practices and things like that. Now, the, the whole thing going into that, when everybody was talking about how the offense was dominating, I was getting a little worried because I was thinking, is our defense that crappy? You know what I mean? Uh, but, you know, somehow they're going to have to try to find a way to be consistent. Also, they're going to have to try to find a way to have an identity. I still don't know what Rhett's uh, identity is. I mean, he's a great game play caller, but we I haven't really been able to say this is what they do and this is what they do well. And I don't think anybody can. I don't think he can. I mean, you know, Alabama was able to take a lot of the bubble screens away by just being aggressive um, and having a, a, a defensive line that that uh, that, that caused dis disruption. Uh, and App State, they did. They just capitalized on them not being able to move the ball. Miami, they moved it at points, but they weren't able to continuously have those long, sustained drives against App State, and it ended up hurting them. And App State was able to do some things against our defense. All right. So people have had a lot to say mm -hmm. about the coaches uh, this week. And, you know, they're talking about Manny. They're talking about Rhett. And I've been trying to throw up a, a big caution sign. It's so early in the season. There's so much football left to play. Talk a little bit for a minute about the adjustments that coaches make uh, once they get into a season. Uh, there are a lot of adjustments that, that are made. I mean, there's uh, coaches get, uh, hey, we got to change this thing up. We got to be more consistent. I mean, you know, they, they some coaches I've been with get harder, uh, you know, tougher in practice. Some coaches kind of back off a little bit. Uh, you got to kind of – he's had a year now. This is actually his first year being a head coach, this last year. Um, he's, he's still learning on the run. I'm not making excuses for him, so I don't want to – all you guys in the comments say I'm making excuses for him, but he's still learning. Remember, he's he hadn't been a head coach. I don't even think he was a high school head coach. So he's been a coordinator, and this is a lot different than being a head coach. So he's trying to figure out um, how to optimize the, the best playing abilities of these kids to be shown on Saturday. And I don't think he's really figured it out yet uh, because what we've seen is a, so far is an inconsistent Miami team. And once they're able to get over that hump, I think we're going to see some greater things out of this team. I'm hoping that. And I hope that Manny is able to somehow convince, uh, convince those guys to play to their best abilities because we really need it, especially against this Michigan State team. All right, Lamar mentioned comments. You, you guys, as you're watching tonight, are welcome to submit comments and questions uh, to us on the show, and we'll uh, we'll be popping those up on the screen as we move forward. I'm going to bring in the uh, third member of our Lamar Thomas Show team now, uh, the voice of the fan, Bruce Warner, who uh, is always happy to represent the fan base, especially <laughs> in weeks where there's a lot to talk about. Um, Bruce, tell us what, what the, the fan takeaway was from the Appalachian State game. Well, obviously disappointment. Ooh. Disappointment in the fact that it wasn't a game that we should have been in the last two minutes worrying about a win. You know, that's that's frustrating. You know, and, and maybe Lamar could answer this. And Gary mentioned it. What's the, what's the carryover from getting smoked by Alabama? Does it take a few days to get these kids mentally ready? And by the time you turn around, it's Tuesday or Wednesday. Maybe that was part of it. And that shouldn't happen this time around. Because I think everybody has their attention. What, but then I'll talk about the App State game. But what about that, Lamar? Is that something that could happen? I mean, I've been with a, a coach that, that basically didn't want to dwell too much on that loss. You know, he kind of cut up the tape. He had all the coaches cut up tape of the positive plays, and we went forward. 
You know, sometimes you can't dwell on the negative because you don't want to beat a dead horse. You don't want the kids to be down. They're already down enough, especially in the day of social media. They're reading all these comments. They're reading the fans. They're hearing all this stuff. So, you know, he, he just said, you know what? This is what we're going to do. We're going to cut up all the good plays, right. and we're going to mention some of the bad plays, but we're not going to dwell on it, and we're going to get ready for next week. And, and we're going to say, hey, that, that's, that, that was, that's in the past. Let's go on. Let's go forward. Here's my thought, Gary. Yesterday you had Garen Ju Justice quote his 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 recording on, on the Kane Sport Live show, and what I what he said to me tells me that the offensive line is having serious problems, and unless and until that gets straightened out, I think the offense is going to struggle. They could struggle this week. I personally don't think Alabama respected our ability to run the ball. I don't think App State did either. So we had a couple of guys down the field that were getting open. But, you know, when you're getting jammed at the line like that and it puts all the pressure on King, um, there's problems. And I don't think it's going to change unless until he fixes the offensive line, which is what, you know, Gary was harping about yesterday. You, you, you have Scaife in there in the summer doing great, and then he craps out against Bama. Jared Williams, I thought, was the next man up. He wasn't. It was the transfer from UNLV. So, you know, when you look at the line and, 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 and the offensive line coach is calling them out, to me, that's their problem. That right now, because you got the skill people. It's those guys. Well, Lamar, I guarantee. I, wait, I guarantee you, him calling them out. He had to go to Manny to ask about that. I <laughs> I that's exactly what there's, I was there's say. No, there's no, there no way in hell he was gonna call them out without the head coach giving uh, okay. the, the blessing. The blessing. Yeah, yeah. Those of us who have been around a while, we saw through that entire <laughs> thing. And I was just getting ready to ask you about that from your coaching hat. Okay. Oh yeah. So. So they start out, they go through spring practice, they go mm -hmm. through fall camp. They put Scaife at right tackle. They decide he's the best. He had good spring, good fall. Shows up for the Alabama game and Didn't get totally the overwhelmed. The stage was too big for him. Correct. Became totally dysfunctional. They had to take him out of the game because mm -hmm. Garen Justice said, we can't get our quarterback hurt. Uh, wow. So now they, they go and they play Appalachian State. And they weren't happy with the right side of the line again. Um, mm -hmm. Justice uh, Olozawun, I, I have the hardest time pronouncing that name. Um, just say O. Just say o. He, yeah, yeah, I'm going to call him O. Good idea. So, you know, he starts at right tackle and Navon Donaldson at right guard. And they struggled enormously against Appalachian State. So now here you are going into week three, Lamar, and everything is thrown wide open. Put on your coaching hat Ooh. and – um, explain to us what the coaches are going through right now, trying to find the right combination on the right side of the offensive line. I mean, it's an offensive line coach. I've been in meetings where, the, you know, because he has those five five guys up there. He's trying to piece it together like a puzzle, uh, trying to find the right combination, as, as we would say. Um, that's hard. I mean, because, you know, you think coming out of spring ball or fall, uh, the practice is early that you got the continuity, you got it all together. Then one guy goes down and it's like, whoa, what's going on? Or, you know, uh, that's a hard deal, man. It's, it's, I got to tell you, it's harder to probably put together that offensive line than it is to, to place receivers in the right position. I mean, you got to have those guys that feel comfortable playing alongside of each other. That's the most important thing. They got to trust the guy on – the other guy is going to see the game coming, the twist, you know, or see the, the, the cat blitz from the short side of the boundary. You know, these are things that playing together as an offensive line, it takes time to gel and to get to know. So it's hard when you, you insert guys in there that haven't been in there because I don't know if I trust that guy. But the other guy doesn't know if he trusted that guy. So it, it's going to be it's going to take some time. It's going to yeah. take some time. Uh, uh, my guess would be and I might be wrong, but I think they may give Scaife another shot at it because he actually won the job. So mm -hmm. when he crapped out against Bam, but I think he's going to be back in there. I know that. Is that true that um, Rambo was screaming at Donaldson during the game? That's yeah. true. Wow. Yeah. True that was one play. Wow, I saw that. I, screaming at him. I saw hey. that. Um, you know, I, I man, it's kind of hard because – hard to talk about because, you know, as a receiver, those guys, your success depends on those guys, you know, blocking you know, so you don't come back to the huddle and you scream at him. I, I, I don't know. Maybe that's what they do now. I, I just know that you know in our huddle, I wasn't screaming at Mario. 
I wasn't screaming at you. Know, the only person, the only person that asked Lamar, yeah. he would have oh, oh, kicked oh. your butt. You know it. There's, there's no way I was screaming at Leon Cersei. You know, I, I, I mean, I might have said a couple things to Gino, like, I'm open, dog. I'm open. But I, I wasn't. I wasn't screen. I, well, I take that back. And maybe what he was doing, because that was a screen pass where Donaldson was supposed to get out and block the corner, but he missed it. So I do remember one time against Florida State, we ran a middle screen, and I told the line, you better get Marvin Jones. You better get Marvin Jones. And they missed him. They missed him. I went down immediately after I called him. I was not, not going to get hit like Vanover. I tell you that. So, yeah, that's, that's a hard one, man. That, that is extremely hard. I mean – is it a positive thing? I don't know because what you're – as a receiver out there telling a young, another guy – I mean, he's a senior. Uh, Rambo, is it, he's a transfer, right? Yeah. So he just Oklahoma. got there. And, you know, I don't know. Is you Are you saying that Oklahoma's program is better than Miami's and you can come in here right now and, and, and be a leader? I don't well, know. That's a byproduct of the transfer portal, Lamar. I yeah. mean, this is this is a four-month showcase for Charleston Rambo. I mean, he came to Miami to put up numbers and, mm-hmm. and build a resume to go to the NFL draft this spring. There's no doubt about it. And uh, if if his offensive lineman on a bubble screen isn't getting the job done, he is standing in the way of what Charleston Rambo moved his life to South Florida for. So I'm not saying it's right. I'm not saying it's wrong. You're way more equipped to give an opinion on that subject. Well, um, I, well, I, well, I'm going to tell you straight up. I didn't yell at no linemen, not them big old dudes. I, I didn't let, yell at them because I needed them to hold that protection for Geno's three-step, five-step, six-step, nine-step drop to get me to rock. And, and that's on the passing game. But the running game is practically non-existent. You know, King yeah. is doing most of our running. Cam Harris said when he has holes, he gets through. But for the yeah. most part, there aren't any holes. So I look at the offense as a byproduct of what's happening with the line. And unless and until we're going to struggle mightily in this particular game, is in my opinion. But but You're Bruce, fishing. but Bruce, we're not Florida State. Yeah, oh, I get that. Yeah, we're not Florida State. We got to win. We got to win, baby. Oh, and two. We got to win. How about that? <laughs> now, now, let me let me throw some, uh, something out here since Bruce just mentioned the running game. Okay, um, again after a 50-50 run pass ratio. In week one, uh, last week, there were 43 running plays and um, let me see here and uh, 30, 33 pass plays. So it was tilted like 60, 40 run pass. Lamar, I think that's changing this week. Uh, This is not a power football team. I I think that's the biggest adjustment that Rhett Lashley can make right now. Um, They're not throwing it enough. They're not. They're not getting the ball in the hands of their weapons enough. Uh, They should not be 60-40 run pass. They should. It should be the other way around. I think we'll see Rhett Lashley make that adjustment this week. Well, I'm hoping that because the team that's coming in here, they're built for that. You know, the, that's that's their conference. You know, that's it's, it's downhill. It's running off tackle. It's all that stuff that the Big Ten, uh, that's what they do. You know, Northwest and all these teams, they they come out, they run the ball. And so, you know, they they see it every day and they see it every week. So they're, I, I, I was able to do a game last year where Michigan State played Ohio State. They stopped the run pretty good at that, that game, too. So, you know, hopefully – we got a passing game that shows up on Saturday, uh, you know, especially in front of uh, the 1991 reunion guys. Okay, we need we need to see some we need to see you air it out. Come on, come on, Manny, come on, Rhett, come on. I want to see some air it out, baby. I don't want to see no running. You ain't gonna be able to run it, so throw it. Just throw it. Throw it a hundred times. I'm good with that. Just as long as nobody gets caught from behind and loses the ball. That's all we care about. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, I, think, I, I, I think we need to have some screens, and I do yeah. think we have to throw deep to Keyshawn early in the game to get those safeties off the line of scrimmage. We've got to go after them deep early. Well, in the game. well I'm hoping, because seeing Michigan State play uh, before last year, uh, I, I don't think we'll see a lot of press. I think they'll play off. you you got to be able to call plays against a team like this. They're going to make sure – that you don't get the big plays, make you call all these plays, and you have to go on a sustained drive and get it out of the field. They don't have the – I don't – my my opinion, I don't think they have the true talent that Miami has, okay? So they're not going to go press. They're not going to – they're not – I watched them against Ohio State. They were scared to death of Ohio State receivers, so they played off. But what Ohio State was able to do 
was put together. Justin Fields was able to put together sustained drives and just drive it down their throat and make smart decisions. So quicker passes, quicker yes. passes. Get rid of the yes. ball. Get the ball out of his king's hands early. Make these guys play the entire field. Then if you can get the safeties up, you can go over the top. You agree? The thing, the, the thing that worries me with King and his quick game is that he's not that tall. Right. So the throwing lanes, you know, these guys can knock balls down because, uh, you know, he has to find those those direct throwing lanes. And, and it's hard. I, you know, I played with some, some tall quarterbacks, so you can kind of see them when you're when you turn and look you can see him you can find him a smaller quarterback the ball just shoots out of nowhere you know it just shoots out if you're running a crossing route uh and all of a sudden you're running and you're looking down the line and all of a sudden that ball pops out there because he's trying to find the lanes because he can't throw over anybody he has to find the throwing lane so that the quick game kind of scares me a little bit with uh with, with because he's a shorter quarterback can they move him around can they move yeah. him out of the pocket and let him yeah. throw yeah. That's what you have to do, right. and it gives him an option to run, you know, right. and uh, gives him a chance to get out of the pocket and make those smart decisions like he's been – like he's shown he can do. Right. As a design play, he should be able to move. Yes, yes, yes. L L Lamar, he ran 19 times last game. Wow. Now, a couple, a couple of them were at the end of the game. So let's say 16. Is that too many? You know, if he doesn't run, we don't win. I'm sorry. We don't win that game if he didn't use his feet. It was just we couldn't run the ball, or not consistently, and because he was able to to do some things with his legs, his feet, we won that ball game. I mean, that's unfortunately that's the way it was. Uh, it, it, he has to at some point use his legs to to win those ball games. All right, uh, Falcon Irks, I guess his name is. He's screaming at us, Lamar, yeah. here on the, on the screen. <laughs> I see he that. Says, he says, "Win ugly, win early." Does winning ugly matter? Um, nah, I mean, it's you got to win. You know, there's a lot of guys out there who marry ugly chicks, and there's a lot of <laughs> there's a lot of chicks out there who marry ugly guys. I mean, it's a win. You know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, it doesn't so, mean they're not happy because I mean, they're ugly. I mean, yeah, you know, it's, they got money. You know, it is what it is. We got the W. I mean, I obviously we're, we're upset because we wanted to see some good things, but. At the end of the day, a win is a win. I mean, uh, we could be Florida State. That was ugly. Okay, yeah. we could be Florida State. Not making excuses, Falcon, ERX. Not trying to make excuses, but we got the W, man. So we got to move on to the next week. Was it a wake up call, or is the yeah. team not ready? I hope it was a wake up call. That says, hey, man. And I'm pretty sure those guys talking amongst themselves, man. We got to tighten up, man. Come on. Dog. I mean, that's. I would hope that there's leadership on the team where guys are talking to themselves and not afraid to speak up and say, we got to tighten up, man. I, I don't know if those guys, I know in my day, and I hate to keep talking about my day, but every now and then I mention it. When we knew guys were coming in, we knew we had to put on the show. Yeah, you got the 91 reunion coming up in here, man. You know, you got a lot of guys that, that were really, really good players at a really, really good time. So bust your Bust your butt. I want to say ASS, but my daughters might be listening. I'm not sure. All right. He's pounding us with questions, but this is a, a decent Let's one. See what he says. Uh, what's the difference in the locker room today from when you were at the U, Lamar? I think I just touched on it. I mean, we had guys that spoke up. I mean, we, we had leaders. You know, we had guys that that, uh, that when they talk, people listen. And, and it was just, you know, we were just, I mean, if you talk, we just listened to you and it was it was because we knew that you put the time in to be able to talk like the, the guys that talked on our team they weren't guys that weren't staying after practice they weren't guys that you know were missing games they weren't guys that were you know just screwing things up there were guys that everybody listened to you know gino toretta opens his mouth we're gonna listen daryl williams opens his mouth we're gonna listen you know lamar thomas opens his mouth he wants the ball you know, so. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but you guys also had that us against the world mentality, which yes, we did. Hearing about, but I don't hear about it anymore because it doesn't exist. Well, it needs to you exist. Guys would have been, it, you, you guys just when you lost, you came back, or you were, or, you know, the BYU game. You guys, yeah, you, yeah, you we, knew it. You knew we, it. Whoever was coming in next week was in real trouble. But not yeah, now. We're, we're pissed. 
we also were tired as hell because they ran the hell out of us. Yeah. I mean, it, it was it was uh, I mean, it was tough practices after that. Uh, so yeah, we were looking forward to the next game, trying to put it behind us. Um, and we just, you know, again, we we took it upon ourselves to, you know, we didn't need Coach Harrison or, you know, to get up there with any rah rah speeches. We already had the speech. We already had it built in that, hey man, you got to tighten up. You know, if it's more film study, if it's more uh, weightlifting, if it's more running after practice. Whatever it is, if it's more catching balls or throwing, it, whatever it was, we had to get it done because we just, we all believed in each other, and that's what it was all about. Don't you think the mentality might be different? When we when Gary's doing these recruiting shows and these guys are making their announcements, they got it off, they got it from LeBron. I'm taking my talent <laughs> to Miami for the next three or four years. They don't say four. They say three or four years because they're thinking ahead already. Mm -hmm. I don't think they have it in here. It is not enough – inner fight to say i'll be damned if that's going to happen again i just don't see it anymore do you agree with that it's a different they're different kids now man it's it's uh from coaching them they're they're extremely different they're not as they're not students of the game because they have so much other stuff going on like this phone uh they don't really you know it's they don't spend as much time watching the game like you know my, my dream was to to play ball you know, I, 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 I engrossed myself in, in the film study. I, I wanted to be better. And I just don't, from a lot of these kids, some of the kids I coach, it's like you have to kind of uh, push them to that level. Uh, and you really have to take your coaching hat and, and, and put it on and, and say, how can I make this kid see that this is an opportunity to better his life, uh, to better his family's life, or, you know, just uh, learn uh, how to compete because it's going to help you in, your next stage of life when you get in the workforce. I mean, these are the things that these kids, they're so used to playing video games and on the phone. And it's, it's like they expect to just go out there and be good yeah. without work. I, I, I Lamar, would keep, <laughs> keep your coaching hat on, Lamar, for a minute. Um, Mark Pearl says people are already calling for Manny Diaz's job. USC mm -hmm. fires Helton mm -hmm. two, two games into the season. Um, mm -hmm. From the coaching standpoint, your thoughts on that, and also the fact that Miami, after losing to Alabama, that everybody knew was going to happen, and then a little bit of a questionable performance against App State, is it isn't it totally unreasonable for people to already be sitting there and 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 putting a hot seat on Manny Diaz? I mean, this today's age, uh, microwave success. You know, if you you're not good, man, or you're not these fans, they they're brutal. I mean, this is a school where we've had a lot of we've had some pride. You know, we have pride, and we won a lot of games here. And these fans, they they're used to winning. They don't they don't. I mean, they don't they don't like losing at all. So you take a program like USC and what they were able to do. Uh, they pulled the trigger. Uh, that's another program with a lot of pride. They've had success over the years. A lot of it was back in the day, just kind of like UM. But, you know, they're, they're just saying that, hey, man, we're, we're, we're going to make a, a different move. I think for Manny, I don't think that he should be thinking about that now. I think for him, if I'm, if I'm him, I'm just thinking about Michigan State, just going out and uh, playing, a, playing a good game, being consistent, and getting a W no matter what. You know, close or not, you got to get a W in this game. You know, I think people got to be a little careful because yeah. it's it's now year three of Manny. Yes, he has not won anything yet. No, he hasn't won the Coastal. Does Do they need to win the Coastal this year? Absolutely. However, I, I think that the thing that nobody ever thinks about is who are you going to get to replace your current coach? And Miami, to me, Lamar, is one of the hardest jobs in the country. And I can't wait till Coach Erickson comes on the show later because I want to talk to him a little bit about this. This is a hard job. It was a hard job when Dennis was here, and yeah. it's, it's an even harder job now because of the, the fact that the program has been struggling for so long and people so badly want to get back. You can't just put anybody in this job, Lamar. You can't just go to get Campbell or you know one of these guys that might be having a little bit of success at another school and and think that you're going to just pencil him right in at the U, and he's going to win. It, it's not. It doesn't no, work like no, that. No, better yet, 
you can't pencil them in because the job itself isn't as beautiful as some of these other jobs. It's not, it's not as, I mean, this is, this program is not what, it's not at Alabama. It's not a USC. It doesn't have that glamour of it. I mean, it's just, you know, you can't say, oh, this guy should leave this program. I mean, these, some of these programs have a lot of money. I mean, a lot of money. And, you know, you you guys are trying to pencil in Mario Cristobal. Nike got a lot of money, bro. You can't, you can't, hey, man, hey, you can't beat Phil Knight. You got private jets. I mean, all kind of stuff. So, you know, you can't just pencil in the guy. You know, you got to, I hate to talk about this right now because I, I'm trying to give this this coaching staff uh, a, a, a true chance to, to, right. to shine, you know, and I, I don't want to really talk about the next step, but, you know, it, it, because it's unfair to them right now. It's, that's, that's exactly what I was getting yeah, at. It's, yeah. it's really unfair to them right now. Um, how many years the guys been? This is one and a half year. One, not one in two games. I mean, you know, it, it's not that bad yet. You know, it. what's bad is losing to Jacksonville State. I'm sorry. That, that's bad. <laughs> so how about it? How about I'm, not try, I'm, I'm, I'm not trying to make excuses. For, yeah, yeah, FIU is bad too. Oops. Um, I'm not trying to make excuses for them, but I just think that right now we need to be focused on trying to get a dub against Michigan State, who's a that, really, really good true. football team. Well, well coached football team. That's true, Lamar. But as the voice of the fan, I don't think the fans give a damn about who they're going to find to be the next coach. I know. I'm not know. happy with him. I they know. They stand writing on the wall. You know, when they got hired, people were complaining at the beginning and how it happened. Now, had he been eight and three in year one and last year six and seven, maybe it wouldn't have been as bad. But, you know, the expectations were high again, and they lose the last – three games last year, and then they lose to Alabama. They struggle against App State. So, you know, you can't just block it out. As a fan, you can't just block it out. They kind of yeah. see that Michigan State's probably going to win. They could lose to Virginia. They may lose to North Carolina, and so on and so forth. So I, I'm just talking from the fans, not from your perspective, but I don't blame them for being upset. What the hell is the accomplished? One week at a time, though. Wait, wait, let me tell you what the – But the, if they beat Michigan what, State, I might be whistling a different tune next week. There you go. Let me tell you what the, what the kids should be thinking right now. Block out the outside noise. Block it out. Just block it out. Don't listen to the fans right now. Get some amongst yourselves. Get closer – and go win the ball game. How about that? Because you know, when you sit there and listen to the fans, it, it's not gonna, it's not gonna, it's not gonna help you look in the mirror at night. Sadly, Lamar, they were right about Randy. They were right about Golden. They were right about Rick, and I bet you they're right about Diaz too. So there's my, there's my view on the left. Okay. Do not, do not, do not, do not, do not, hey, I'm a not, fan. I'm hey, not a Lamar. Not. I'm a fan. Hey, That's this is opinion. my show. Do not bring up Al Golden Showers on my show. Do not. <laughs> hey, you know, you know, Lamar, if he didn't, if he would have fired D'Onofrio a lot, yes, year two, he may still be the coach. He was not no, that bad. He just had no defense. The no defense in the row, whatever yeah. his name is. Thank what was God. it? All right, Lamar, you've Yo. worked. Well, you've worked. You've worked under some really good offensive coordinators. Um, mm -hmm. You know, Bobby Petrino can dial it up mm -hmm. as well as anybody. Um, Eddie Grant. Eddie, Eddie had that good running game, man. Yeah. And, uh, you know, so Rhett Lashley is lighting it up at SMU and mm -hmm. parlays that into coming to Miami and getting the Miami job. Mm -hmm. And it's not coming as easy at Miami. He's running the same plays. He, he's scheming it up the way he did at SMU. It's not coming as easy here. Um, why do you think? You know, it could be a combination of some things. Um, you know, these coaches, it's a, it's a, the coaching society, man, let me tell you, you can call and ask another coach, how did you stop this guy? A lot of times guys know signals. I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a, it's a bad deal going on. Sometimes guys know signals, guys know tendencies. They call other guys and say, Hey, how was you, how were you able to stop this guy? Uh, and especially if guys been successful because everybody's going to try to figure out, on the defensive side, how do we stop this guy? They have a lot of friends. I mean, I, that could be something. I don't know. But I just think, for the most part, we're just not executing. And you got to execute the plays as they're called. And you got to be able to – every 11 guys got to be able to do the right thing, you know, and everybody has to do their job. And I just don't think that 
from my point of view, it's nothing too wrong with the play calling. Um, but I just don't think those guys are doing their job every play, whether it's a receiver, whether it's a quarterback, whether it's the off offensive lineman, whether it's the running back or the tight end. You know, everybody has to do their job. The guy's going to call the plays that he has on his call sheet for every situation. And most of the time, you're, you're pretty correct. Most of the time, defenses, you know what they're going to be in. You just have to execute. Guys have to do the right, right thing. He came in with this reputation, almost like a run and shoot, like they were wide yeah. open offense. But in reality, the gallery knows because they had their stats. They, he ran the ball more than 50%, of that, like 55 to 60%. And he's struggling with that now. So it's causing problems for his entire offense because, the I, again, I think it's the line. I think that's a yeah. big problem. He's got more receivers, I think, and just as much talent. Of course, you know, Knighton's not there to help with in the backfield. But I, I think there's enough talent. It's the offensive line that's holding him back. He's got to be careful here. This quarterback could get hurt. And, that, and that's why Mallory hasn't been in the passing plays because he's staying in the block. They don't have much choice. And just like uh, Falcon ERX just said, you got to score in the red zone. You got to score, man. I mean, I know we have a great field goal kicker, but – you got to score. You got to figure out how to get those guys in that end zone, whether it's running, passing, or creating mesh, uh, you know, pick routes or, you know, mesh routes or whatever. You got to or throw phase, something. You got to figure out how you're going to get touchdowns because you need touchdowns. Because as we see, you know, the defense is okay right now, but, you know, they, 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 they've had some busts too. Oh, yeah. If you're wondering, if you're just joining us and you're wondering what's all that action going on behind Lamar tonight, uh, he's at Boat Camper Sports Bar and Grill in Miramar. Miramar, a new, a new sponsor of the show. Um, yeah. Thank you, thank you to Kim Boat Camper for that. Amen. Man. Uh, great, great place to go get a bite to eat, Lamar. Um, I, I know you got your menu right there. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, I'm sure. Oh, you, I'm this, sure. this is the drink menu. Hold on. <laughs> 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 find the food menu what's going on here hey how about this i got this right here oh that's the flip the, the flip card that's you better have a magnifying card. glass man I, what's I, up I, with I, this I was, man I was, Gary, I was sitting there trying to read that the other day and i was like whoa gary what's up with this man this is this is sad. i can't i can't even these no i can't even see hey uh come on man we got we got to do better than this we got, we got it. This is in the media. This is in the press box. We got to do better than this, man. I, I enjoy being up there, but I, I'm, a, I'm getting old, dog. I can't see this. I can't. This is just I, too. I couldn't see a thing. I, I couldn't see to, it, man. I said, Don, I got to start man. bringing my reading glasses to the stadium. Hey, that was, oh man, I, I've never seen one this small, man. <laughs> hey Lamar, let's give a shout out to our other sponsor, All Canes. Um, yes. This week, this week down at All Canes, they're celebrating. The 1991 national championship team, and um, you're you're part of that, and there's going to be the big reunion uh, th this week. And um, talk a little bit about all canes, and I mean, you know, you talk about 1991, and and they obviously they go way back. Uh, obviously, uh, they've been the you know the, the, the top cane shop for like five de decades now, and. Um, you know, it's all about family with, 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 with Harry and, and the people down at All Canes. And I know that's been a big part of your life for all these years. I mean, Harry has been there so long that his son, I, I look at him like my brother. You know what I mean? That's, I, I, I've been in that store so many times and it's just a family atmosphere. And you want to go and, and get some Canes gear. That's where you should go because, you know, you're going to go down there and, and uh, Harry's going to take care of you. It's going to be like you're... When you come back in the next time, he's going to remember you. He just has that, that brain like that. And it's just a great place to shop uh, for Canes gear. You remember when they used to show the games? Yeah. You remember when they used to show the games in there? That was always cool. You walk in, you're shopping, and you look up and, oh, there's there's a touchdown. Okay, cool. I mean, it was just it's just a, it's a great place. So go get your Canes gear from Harry. Uh, what a great place down there on Pont, right on campus, right, right close to the baseball stadium. Uh, you can't miss it. Uh, what a great place. I used to go there, and I would look for guys like Lamar to see if I saw any cane players there. Right? <laughs> you, I, I, that, you, for me, that was fun. There may be a cane player in there. And there usually you, would, usually was. you would find me. You would find me all the time. I'd go by there all the time because that was my guy, man. He, yeah, well, you walked right past me. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, since 1958, 
They've been the number one yeah. cane shop. Absolutely unbelievable. Uh, noon kickoff on Saturday, guys. They will be opening up at 8 a.m. So if you want to hit all here. canes before Don't you go to the stadium, 8 a.m. Harry might even serve donuts. Who the heck knows? And, and it's and most of the time, it's, it's some of the gear you see on the sideline, too. So, you know, when you see those coaches wearing it, he's, he's trying to get it. Believe me, Harry's trying to get the same gear. He wants those, all the people that come in there looking for it. He wants to make sure he, he has it. So, you know, you see those coaches, you see Manny wearing nice stuff. It's probably going to be in all games, too. All right, Lamar, Fa Falconer, he's all over it tonight, man. Yeah, he's, wow, he's, 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 he, he's on fire, man, on fire. But he's asking, he's making some great points. No scoring in the red zone. As a player and as a coach, what happens in the red zone? It doesn't matter the level of football. We see teams go up and down the field between the 20s. Getting to the red zone, the field shortens, things get tighter. Explain to the people listening what happens in the red zone and why things get more difficult when you get there. Well, you know, like you said, the field is shortened. I mean, it, the defense has, um, you know, a, kind of an advantage because you – everything is condensed they don't have to worry about the ball being thrown deep you know so they can they can do a lot of different things the, the thing that you have to have is, as a as a play caller you have to have a core of plays that you your go-to plays in the red zone against what you think they're going to do and you got to have one you got to have a couple for man you got to have a couple for zone and you got to have a couple that you're just really really good at and it, when you have that on your play call sheet because it you know, you see those for people that don't uh, that watch the game. They see the coaches with that play call sheet. It's the red zone. It's about maybe ten to fifteen plays in the red zone uh, from the ten in, and those are your core plays that you practice. Hopefully, with Petrino, uh, we had a lot of success because we had success in practice. You know, and he wouldn't call a play unless it worked in practice. So it didn't matter what the defense he he. If it worked in practice, he was going to call it. If it didn't work in practice, he just threw it out. You know, he had 15 plays, 15 plays down there that were going to work regardless. And we were going to make sure we had confidence because we did it on, on throughout the week. And that's how he did it. Um, and Eddie, Eddie had his core plays. Eddie Grant, it is at the University of Kentucky, was my coordinator there when I was coaching. Uh, he had his plays. You know, most of them involved the Wildcat. But, you know, he had his core of plays that those were his bread and butter plays and they were hard to stop. So you got to have you got to have your core core of plays. Don't you need to be there has to be a more of a, an element of physicality that Miami doesn't seem to have in their in the mm -hmm. red zone. They just don't seem to be blocking enough to get these guys open and get into the end zone. They're just, they're for years now, they're struggling on short yarded situations, which is no different really than being right. in the red zone. They're struggling. Mm -hmm. Well, again, you know, you get to a point as a coach, you're saying, hey, on the sideline, okay, this this is going to, when you call timeout and it's that fourth and one, hey, guys, this is what we work for. This is what we work for. This is what, we're going to see what type of men we are. Well, if it doesn't work, that's a big downer. You know, that that's, that's yeah. it's, a, it's a real psychological block if you can't get that first down on fourth and one. It's just like being at the goal line. If you can't get it. It's hard to call plays at that point. You can't say, okay, we're going to try to push it in. You got to change it up. You got to go to some, some mess route. Some, you know, you got to pick a guy to, to get a guy open. You got to throw some fades. You got to have somebody make a play. You got you to have playmates. Guys have to want to make plays in the red zone. I always, my whole thing was you make plays in the red zone, everybody loves it. You know, you got to make plays in the red zone. It, it becomes a more serious ball in the air in the red zone. You're trying to make sure that you come away with that touchdown and uh, take the helmet off and celebrate. Well, you also were a, a high jumper, so you were able to yeah. get up there. You know, I don't yeah. know who does yeah. that. Now, I think maybe if they spread Mallory out, they could go up, go to him one-on-one. -on -one. He's, he's got a big frame. He does. The problem is when you spread those guys out, they kind of know that that's, that's, that's where the ball's going. <laughs> Hey, something's <laughs> got to give. <laughs> we got to score. Lamar, hey, Kane, hey. Kane for life says the RPO is not for De'Ara King. Your thoughts? Mm. You know, that's a new wave of football. You know, run pass option, man. It's, that's that's what they're doing now. It's, it's uh, you know, it, it came about in the last couple of years. And, you know, that's a new wave of football. That's what these guys are being taught. And, and, and it's also transferred to the, to the next level. You know, they, they're running run pass options. So, I mean, 
I, I can't say it's not for him because he's had success doing it. I mean, he's 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 a decent quarterback, man. He just – I think everybody, again, all 11 guys have to be on the same page. That's where the breakdowns have happened. Somebody missed the block, uh, receiver runs the wrong route or misses the – you know, misses the, the catch. Uh, the quarterback maybe makes the wrong read. You know, it's just something always going wrong that I'm sure Rhett is like, God dang, man, come on, guys. We, we're able to do it during the week, but we get in the game and it's not happening. What, what is going on? So I'm pretty sure they're having some come-to-Jesus conversations uh, in those meetings. You know, last year he had Pope and Wiggins now, and, and, and um, Brevin Jordan. He doesn't have Brevin. Yeah. Pope and Wiggins yeah. are on the bench. He's got Keyshawn Smith, a kid, and he's got Rambo who just, you know, he's a transfer. So maybe he's still mm-hmm. struggling. And he missed all the spring. So maybe mm-hmm. he's he just might be off. Give him another couple of games. He might be a lot better. I think that's part of it. The, the only problem is we don't really have a couple of games. <laughs> we got we to gotta win this Michigan State game, you know. And, uh-huh. and if we – if we go out and play the way we did last week, I don't know if that's good enough to beat Michigan State. So, but if we're able to squeak one out, I'm happy. You know, I just want a W. I, I really want, a, I really want a good showing. But if it doesn't happen and we get a W, I think I can walk out of the stadium. I, I'll be okay with that. Yeah, Unfortunately, that's that's. I don't. I don't think a lot of our fans feel that way, and I don't think a lot of my alumni feel that way. They want to see. Uh, Miami dominate. So this is going to be a big game for many, man. This is going to be a big game for the program. Well, Fal- Falcons pro- part of our broadcast team this week. Um, <laughs> but my God, again, he's bringing it. All right. Um, he says the Eric needs to relax, not try to put it all on his feet. I mentioned that he ran 16 times last game. I thought it was a little too too much. Um, it looked to me like when the game got tight, he just decided I'm not allowing us to lose this game, and he mm-hmm. just started tucking it and, and going. Um, hey, hey Falcon, you stand your ass back there and get hit. <laughs> I'm just saying, bro. It, it don't look like they were blocking too well back there. I'd have ran that hip or two. You know what I mean? Hey, at some point as a quarterback, you don't want to get hit too many times, bro. And so, I mean, if he doesn't run <laughs> – we didn't win that game. I'm sorry. If he, yeah. if he didn't didn't run, we didn't win the game. Oh, had, my man, a- hey, hold on, hold on. My man Ray, the manager, just brought me a note and said, "Do you want something to drink? Mm. Mm. <laughs> water, water, please." <laughs> <laughs> we're we're going to turn the Lamar Thomas show at the happy hour now that we have Bo Campus Sports Bar and Grill. <laughs> <laughs> as a sponsor <laughs> and, and Lamar now that we see that the connections actually work in there mm-hmm. uh, there's all types of possibilities that'll open mm-hmm. up mm-hmm. All right. mm-hmm. the only separation says we have the talent advantage versus 90% of our opponents every year is that true I don't think that's true mm, I don't know bro that's a 90% of I got to look I mean, over the schedule again. They, they want to believe, like, <laughs> a lot of people want to believe that that we have a talent advantage over everybody we play mm-hmm. um, and that it's 100% a coaching issue with, mm-hmm. with the program. And I, I think it's a, it's, it's a complicated subject. I mean, I, I think a lot of it starts with, with recruiting and mm-hmm. not just the fact that of, a, of a high-rated class or a not high-rated class. I think – the big thing that's been falling apart is that so much of the recruiting classes have been misses. And, you know, we've almost been on self-imposed probation. Uh, now, in, in other cases, yes, the coaching could have, could have been better. The development could have been better. But before you even get to that, you better start evaluating better and, and not missing on five, ten kids a year uh, to where your recruiting class ends up being 11, 12 players every year. Unfortunately for coaches nowadays, and I'm going to say this, uh, they, when they recruit, they're looking for those guys already developed. They don't develop kids anymore. Like they don't look at guys and say, Hey, this guy's going to develop into, uh, a great player for Russell Maryland. You know, this guy's not going to develop into a Ryan McNeil. This guy's not going to develop into a Daryl Williams. You know, they look at guys, they're going after guys right now that are five-star guys because the fans want that. They, they, they if you sign a bunch of three-star guys, they're gonna be they're gonna be trying to, to have your head on the platter because we 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 didn't finish in the top fifty in recruiting. 
if, even if you said, hey, we eva evaluated all those guys and we saw that they were great players, those fans don't want to hear that. Now, if you go out the next year and win with them, then that's different. But what's happening, we're getting these really good players, and like you said, it's not trans it's not translating to, to W's. And we got to figure out why we're having misses. I mean, you know, you got a guy like Stephen Fields. He's a great recruiter. He, he, he's recruited some really, really good players. But when they get here, you know, what, what is happening? What is going on? What, what is happening that those guys are not um, – they they're, they're not playing I – mean, first of all, they shouldn't be playing early. Okay, let's just make sure we got this un, un, understanding. The, re, the way you develop a program is you keep the kids in your system and they grow, they develop, they learn – time management of college they, un they, uh, they start understanding where the classes are and everything else that goes along with easing their mind so now they can get to Saturday and play ball you know you, you're a sophomore or junior you finally get your opportunity you're developed a little bit more it's harder for a freshman who doesn't know where he's going every day now he has NIL pulling at him social media all this stuff girls everything else now you're asking this guy to go out there and play that's hard. I, I was not ready to play. A lot of my a lot of my teammates in my senior class were not ready to play. We all red shirted except Daryl Smith, you know, so Charles Farms. But, you know, you you look at some of these teams like in Alabama. Yeah, they had one guy that was young, but the majority of them are older guys that have been in the program one or two years and they get their opportunity and they watched success. That's Clemson, for example. You look at their program, a lot of older guys, a lot of veteran guys. Yeah, you got one or two guys, but the majority of them are not new guys. They're older guys that have been in the program and seen success and know what it takes to be a winner. Well, that, that you combine with guys leaving early over the last seven yes, or eight years, yes. that doesn't help at all. But I think his comment about the 90% is somewhat true, but not in the trenches. Because yeah, okay. everybody knows the receivers we got and the backs we got and the tight ends we got, Arroyo. But if you look yeah. in the trenches, that's where we're failing. That's a problem. Mm, that could be. Ramar, that you said be. coaches don't want to develop. They, they want players that are already developed. Um, water, by the way. Water, water. Okay. <laughs> um, so is the rest of your desk. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> so they, they want players already developed. Um, mm -hmm. You know, you were in that situation. You recruited Lamar Jackson to Louisville. Mm -hmm. He's already developed. He's, you know, walks in and, and very quickly was best player in college football. Uh, not too many guys are able to do that, Lamar. And uh, is, is it the pressure that's on coaches, it, it, you know, to win right now? You, you know, you don't have time to spend three years developing a guy anymore. You need a guy to come into the program ready to contribute right away. I'm glad you brought that up because a lot of times when you're recruiting guys, is you're talking to coaches behind the scenes and you're saying, Dude, I need him to play because I don't even know if I'm going to be here to coach his ass. You know, you just don't know. So they're, 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 they're bringing guys in saying, okay, hey, man, I need this guy to, to get out on that field because two, three years from now, I might not be here. You know, you just don't know. So it's, it's, it's a hard thing, man. It's just that the program kind of – the programs, the winning programs kind of have the blueprint – because they don't have to play guys earlier than they should be out there. And they have these guys grow, they get bigger, stronger, faster, more knowledgeable about the game and what's going on in their everyday lives. So when they get to Saturday, it's easier. And, and the transfer portal doesn't help either because all these no. guys have to say is, I'm leaving and they're gone. You no. can't develop them because they want to play in two seconds the minute they get to school. And guys, it, it is unbelievable how you have to – Make sure you don't hurt a kid's feelings. Yeah, you have to coddle them all. Yeah, you have to coddle them. I mean, I don't know way. if Jimmy Johnson could be a successful no. coach. No. I, 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 someone asked me that about Jimmy. They said, hey, you think Jimmy would be successful right now? I said, no, nah, because he's not He's not a coddler. He, he he's not going to coddle guys. So he, he won't be successful. I mean, it's, it's just a different era of kids now. You have to you have to be nice to them in a way. You can't, you can't rattle their cages, you know, you can't you can't not let them get water. You can't keep a practice going for five hours. You know, it, they're different. They're rules now. So these kids, they hold it over your head, too. They know, hey, coach, don't talk to me like that. 
I know I tell, my mama, I, I, I tell my mama, <laughs> she'll be, she'll be, she'll be yeah, down even, here in 10 minutes. They eliminated the Oklahoma drill. Unbelievable. Yeah. All right. So, uh, Waverly Pinckney says that Miami needs to run a true spread like Chip Kelly's Oregon spread offense because it'll unlock King's abilities. The O line is not good enough for this Auburn like power spread. Whoa. The power spread versus the Chip Kelly Oregon spread, Lamar. What's he talking about? Let's see here. The Chip Kelly's Oregon spread offense, but because it unlocks King's ability. I think what he's saying is you got to spread them out. The power, the O line is not good enough to have. Ooh, the O line is not good enough to have. Uh, I'm sorry. They brought me some wings. Ooh. Ooh. They, they know the way to a black man's heart. Chicken. <laughs> um, so the, uh, the, the, what he's saying is that the power game we don't have that. that. <laughs> I can say it. Um, the power game. I think what he's saying: if we spread them out more, you spread. You know, well, King will be able to see more things happening, and defenses can't do different things to him instead of the 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 power spread where. You know, you spread out, but you still have power guys in the back there. Maybe a tight end back there, a fullback, that type of thing as a lead blocker. Uh, that, I think that's what maybe he's talking about. Let me try this. <laughs> try, the, try, try those wings. Let us know how they are. Bo Camper, Sports Bar and Grill in Miramar. That's where Lamar is. Is it hot? You got hot hot stuff in there? Mm -hmm. Good. Thank you, Kim. Bo Camper. Hey. Let's Give him my address, will you please? <laughs> In the meantime, bro Brother Jay Blaze, he's got it all figured out. Protect the Eric King, stop the run, pass vertically down the field, put pressure on the quarterback, D-line, get there to their quarterback, control the time of possession. Dang. I don't think he left anything out. Basically, just so dominate there's, the game. <laughs> there's your, there's yeah. your coach in waiting right there. There Brother you go. He's, Brother, he's the next Brother, coach. <laughs> next coach. I mean, that's, I, mean I, I, I would love to send – Manny, that that text, you know, that's, that's what it's all about, right there. I mean, if if it was that easy, <laughs> man, you could bottle that up and sell it, Jay. You need you need to. Dave Warrior, he's got to figure it out. The Eric has to throw the ball on those damn RPOs and not give it to Cam. But we said that. Finish well, chewing. Go ahead. Finish chewing. Lamar. Well, against Alabama, we tried it. And they blew up this damn screen passes. It's true. They, they, they were, they, they were, they were blowing up the bubble screens. Oh man, I, I felt bad for Red at that point because it's taking a a part of his offense that you know a couple, uh, a large percentage of it, those bubble screens. It took it right away. You know, now you're making that read as a quarterback, and you're saying, okay, the run is not there. I'm gonna throw this bubble screen out there. And it was not working at all, at all. But that's Bama. You can't stop it because yeah. you're not using it yeah. because of that. But oh, I would also yeah. think that most defenses are going to look at what North Carolina did and what Bama did, and even what yeah. Appalachian State did. Just ignore the run and go after yeah. De'Aaron King. He's the he's the linchpin for all this. You got to go after him. That's what well, I would. Think. Until your receivers can make a lot of plays, your tight end, your receivers, your backs can make some plays down the field. That's what they, you know. That's what they're going to do. I, if I were, if, if he's I were, got time to throw, he needs time. He doesn't if have. I was, time. If I was a defensive coordinator, I would just, you know, again, I want to see you string together a lot of plays. I want to, I want to make you call a bunch of plays to see what you think, sure. and make you. Hopefully, you make a mistake somewhere, you know, a bad read, a fumble, and I want to, I want just want to, I want to make the game. I want to shorten it on the defensive side by playing a bend but don't break defense and seeing if you can actually call plays. That's what I would do. All right, Team Dog, uh, we got a lot, we, we, a lot of guys have, have all this figured out. He, want, he, he <laughs> wants a coach that can motivate. Now, mm. we talked about this earlier in the show. Um, what Garen Justice did yesterday in calling out a few of his linemen, uh, we're in agreement that he cleared it with Manny first. Yeah, and, he had to. And they are trying to motivate their kids. And, and 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 that's a motivational tool that a coach can use. I remember when Don Solinger 
Um, he did it with uh, God. My mind's blank. It was it was the running back from Broward County, Tyrone Moss. Yeah. Donnie Stollinger did it with Tyrone Moss and and got lit up by Larry Coker for doing it. He didn't clear it. <laughs> he didn't clear it first. Um, we think we agree. The coach justice probably cleared this. And, oh, and I think what we're seeing is the coaches, they're trying to motivate. they got to yeah. get their guys playing better. Yeah. Uh, how big of a factor is that for a coach, Lamar, motivation? It's a big factor. I mean, we, we would love to have guys like, uh, you know, Michael Irvin or, or Ray Lewis be able to talk every day to get your guys motivated. But as a, as a coach, as a position coach, you got to figure it out. you got to, you know, it, it's hard to – you know, especially if you lost a game or it's hard to try to get these kids motivated. Uh, you got to have some type of leadership in each room because you, you can't touch them all. But sometimes the, the players themselves can can uh, make it a lot easier for you. And uh, you, you try to what I try to do, I try to try to find who that guy is in my room. And I talked to him a lot. Whether I, I couldn't do it with Devonte Parker because at Louisville, because he he didn't like to talk. So I had to find someone else, you know, that made plays like an Eli Rogers or, or you know, Michael Lee Smith, uh, uh, Michael Lee, Michael Lee, uh, to 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 be able to talk to those guys and, and uh, try to get them going because you got to have it. It, it. It's a long year, and when you lose games early, it becomes an even longer year. Lamar, uh, Gary Griggs says part of the problem with the O-line is technique. They don't move their feet, leverage, et cetera. Uh, is it that simple? Well, I'm not an O-line guy, but I tell you what, when I see guys who are running free and the O-line is chasing them, <laughs> something's wrong. <laughs> it's either the hands or the feet. Something's wrong. Technique-wise, you're right. Something is wrong when the guy is – when the O-lineman has turned around and is watching – the quarterback run for his life. So, yes, he's right. Something's yeah, wrong. And, and, and they're not picking up any of the stunts. They're just no. lost. They're lost. No. no. Well, last no. night we had Leon Searcy on Kane Sport Live. And, mm. uh, you know, Big Bruce, I'll tell you, Leon, Leon was pretty animated. He had a lot to say about this subject. And, and he, he felt like the technique was breaking down a little bit. And he liked the idea of being hard on the guys and, and, and pushing them and stuff. Uh just commanding a, a higher level of, of, of excellence. And paying attention to what they're trying to teach them. they got to pay attention to the techniques and things because when you go in the game, I mean, uh, Justice's comments were like, he was great in the spring. I'm talking about uh, Scaife. He was great in July. What happened against Alabama? How do you win the job and then crap out like that? So I, I don't know what it was. could have been psychological because look at who they are playing against. That's why I'm saying this is just me. I would put him in here against Michigan State and see what he does because he did earn the job. He has been there before. They cannot keep switching around and switching around. And the, the, what's his name? Oh, he's not the guy. He's not the answer. I think they kicked him inside already, didn't they, Gary? He's now playing guard. Yeah. Oh, oh, they yeah. moved him in the inside. Yeah, they moved him inside. So I would imagine it's got to be Scaife. Yeah, I, I agree. Eric Williams wins the job. I don't know. It's a so, good game. So strange clouds here says get rid of this RPO crap altogether. But Lamar, that's modern day offensive football. Yeah, yeah, that's that's modern day, man. That's that's what it's about right now. Um, you know, everywhere you look, they're, they're running it. I mean, that's unfortunately that's what you're going to see. I don't know unless you want the uh, the Georgia Tech old offense to come oh, back. No, and, yeah, no, or go back to the wishbone. Oh, oh right man. It. yeah. <laughs> You know no, I mean, gone. I, 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 think, I think what I said before is somewhat correct. I think King didn't have the spring. He's maybe still thinking about his name. Who really? He doesn't look like it on the field. No, I didn't. And, you know, they're a little discombobulated. So I think this is a big game. I think it should come together a lot better. It should. Whether they win or not, I don't know. But well, these guys are lighting up the board with these comments. Yeah, I know. They got a lot. But, 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 but wait till you see who just popped into the lobby, Lamar. We've Ooh. got we've got absolute royalty. I'm just gonna go ahead and and hit the button here. And, Cole. Um, oh, Bruce. oh my, oh, oh there my. it is, Dennis oh. Erickson. God, it's been way too long. How are you, Coach? Can you hear us? Oh, can't hear you guys. There you are. We can, we can hear, hear you, you, Coach. 
We can hear you. Okay. How I'm you here. doing, Coach? There he is. What's going on, guys? Dennis, how, you, how you been? Lamar says he could still take you on the golf course, even though you play every day now. Who said that? Lamar? Lamar. <laughs> he actually said something like that? Yes, he did. I, I don't believe that about him, but he probably could. I mean, he can't a 74-year-old man. He better quit playing. <laughs> how you doing, Coach? Doing good. Doing good sitting out here on the back cooling lake, getting ready to come to Miami uh, tomorrow morning to – to watch the Kansas and Michigan State play. So excited to get back down into South Florida and, and really excited about the union and, and uh, see see all those players. I think we have quite a few that are coming according to what they tell me. I think they all are, but it's going to be fun to that group because you got to remember we went undefeated and went, went undefeated the year after that. So that's, you don't see that very often. All right, congratulations, Coach. I know it's 30 years later, but two national titles with Miami. Um, you did an incredible job, and actually I think we could have won more, but it, it, was, it was so much fun watching your team play. I, I was thinking about what I was going to ask you before. You know, you're so noted for the offense and what you, the things you did with the one back. Um, but two of the biggest games that we, we played, uh, you smoked Houston. And in the Cotton Bowl, which is a memorable game, they got three points, Texas. So you you were loaded on defense. Talk about that for a second, because most people think of you as the offensive guru. Okay, I hope you can hear me better than I hear you. Yeah, we hear you. Yeah, we can hear you. Go we can hear you, Coach. Me, but, uh, okay, good. Well, yeah, yeah I mean, yeah, the, we, we, had, we had great offenses uh, without a question, but – you know the the base, the base of that program. The question was our defense, and uh, it happened every time we played. I mean, we played great on defense, gave the offense a lot more opportunities uh, with the football. But it was a great combination, and to me, it was all about speed, and physicality, and believing in each other. But yeah, the the Houston game. I don't think Klinger still recovered from that one. He got hit so many times when he goes. He knew where he was when he got got on the bus, but. Yeah, that was a great. That was a great defensive game for our players. Yeah, that was, and and really, and from what I remember, and the, and the three linebackers were covering receivers, and they dropped a lot of balls. They just looked like they were afraid to go out, and, you know, and get open because when Klingler threw it, those guys were whacked. Um, great game. That was just a real yeah. dominating performance, coach. Well, you look at the three linebackers that started. They all played in the NFL for a long period of time, and, and you know. It's, that that group, Michael, and, you know, Darren, and and uh, I mean, it, it it was a great great group that could run around and, and make, make plays all the time. And I'm not so sure that they weren't all all pro at one time. Hey, Dennis, you got the the big 1991 reunion this this weekend. Uh, when you're in the moment. You know, obviously, you're trying to win the national title every year, uh, but now you're you, you're coming back three decades later. And talk a little bit about what type of feeling that is, and and just to be able to to, to reflect back on what you guys accomplished. Uh, yeah, I mean, it really was amazing, absolutely amazing when you think about it. Well, I mean, when you look at the time that we were there. The thing that there's a lot of things that happened, but I learned probably as much or more from the players than, than maybe I ever taught them because you know, that program was so so much camaraderie guys played hard had a lot of fun playing the, playing the game all the time a lot of times maybe too much fun I really enjoyed that and uh, but, I mean it was a group that uh, they believed they could win every football game and they won a lot of them but it, it was fun for me but I've never seen you know, the biggest Thing that that uh, I saw differently at Miami than most places was how well they played together. But the team speed was ridiculous on, on both sides of football. You, know, yeah. you can't win that many national championships, that many games without having having a, a great uh, group of guys and guys that played hard all the time. Believe me, you know, Mark can tell you this: if you didn't practice hard, or if you didn't play hard, 
I didn't have to say a thing because everybody was going to take care of that in the locker room. There was no ifs or ands about that. They care of it themselves, and, and so you really had to had to worry about that. I mean, I remember we got beat by BYU the second year, and that might have been one of the better teams we had. And, so we went there and didn't play very well, and we lost. But uh, uh, from that day on, I mean, it, 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 everybody held each other accountable, and that's what it was all about. And, you know, it's not like nowadays where everybody's making excuses. It's his fault or my fault. I didn't do it. He did it. Bad coaching, bad player, whatever it might be. But that's all you hear. You never heard that uh, six years I was at Miami. Nobody. I think he's in the mountains. Think he's in the mountains. I think he's in the mountains. There he goes. Still there? Yeah, there he is. Okay. You we lost you for a hot yeah, I'm there. I'm here. Oh. Hey, Coach, uh, I, I just want well. to talk about – Coach. Yes, yeah, sir. I just want to talk about – I mean, it was such a joy to, to coach alongside you in, in at the uh, Salt Lake City Stallion. That was an awesome experience, man. I That was <laughs> – that was great, man. You, I could only imagine what those meetings used to be back in the days. But it was so much fun. It was so much fun to sit there and, and and hear you talk about football and everything you knew and and giving it to us younger coaches, uh, giving the experience of, of just all your experience. I mean, the stories and your play calling and all that, man. It was it was just a lot of fun. I wanted to just tell you that it was. I, I really enjoyed. It's one of the highlights of my coaching career, getting a chance to coach alongside you. That was a lot of fun, Lamar. I mean, coaching in that league, uh, it was just it was fun seeing those guys and they, they, they were trying to make it in the league, they practice hard, and you never had to, to worry about a lot of things. And, and uh, it was a lot of fun. We were playing, playing pretty good. I thought the league was going to be successful until that guy stole all that money. At least you think he's giving us that. <laughs> it's always about the money. <laughs> but I mean, you all have a. I don't, know, I don't know how much the guy embezzled, but a lot more than any of us will see. But, uh, <laughs> I don't even know. But I mean, that was a, I mean, that was that was a fun league, and I really enjoyed it. Coaching with Lamar, and he's an outstanding coach, and somebody's missing out on him right now. He should be coaching receivers. Something that's for sure. I'll, I'll second that, coach. And I mean, I've loved coaches, but the thing that he does is he's technique, you know has been there, has done it, he knows what needs to be done. And, uh, and that's how he comes to And uh, it was fun uh, being around him and the other guys that, uh, that, that we coached. And so it was fun. And I hope Lamar gets another chance to get involved. That league was fun. I wish we would have gotten Hey, well, hey Dennis, well, we've been – oh, go ahead, Lamar. I was saying the Rock owns it now, Coach. He owns the league. We need to get back in. We need to get with the Rock. Do we? <laughs> I don't know. I, I have a little trouble getting a hold of him on the phone. How about you? <laughs> <laughs> Me too. <laughs> yeah. Hey, hey, Dennis, no, we've thought, been um... – No, go ahead. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt. No, that's okay. Um, we've been talking yeah. a lot about offense tonight. Um, and – uh, the RPO and the benefits and the, and the, and the, the disadvantages of it, what, what kind of quarterback you need. Um, you were a, a visionary in offensive football, you know, in, in the years that you were at Miami and, and moving forward in your football career. Um, can you just talk a little bit about modern day offensive football, what your thoughts are on the RPO and, um, you know, what, what you think is the best way to attack a football field in today's game? Well, I think you got to spread them out, number one. And uh, I like to think that we, we, we started that back in the day, but it was, uh, it was what they're doing now we did 30 years ago, to be very honest with you. I mean, we, uh, we were in uh, three wides, four wides sometimes, uh, ran a lot of play action pass, and then we read it too. You know, the RPOs are the RPOs, but, you know, we, we, we did it. I mean, we'd get in trips and the guy would be in the slot. If the guy didn't go out and cover him, we threw the ball to him. And that's basically what they do now. You know, if they get sent as a box or whatever, then they're, you know, instead of they got the run play call, but uh, if, he, if he sees seven in the box, he's going to throw it on whatever routes they got called outside on the RPO. And uh, so you're always reading somebody. And, and uh, 
And sometimes you hold it too long. I mean, you think you're going to throw it, and, and it's not there, and they're not blocking pass or blocking run. And, and so that quarterback's down there getting ready to throw it, and he gets hit in the mouth a few times. So to me, that's a difference. You're, you're, it's option football, but you're either going to throw it, you know, or, or hand it off. But, again, like I said, we did that too. We did that quite a bit. Un- uncovered guy is what it was all about. So they've just taken it a little bit further, uh, putting routes on on, the, on those. Which I think is good. I, I think it's good. Uh, quarterback has got to be able to have some mobility. And, and the thing about RPO is if, if it's not there, you don't have it off. It's just another way for that quarterback to get hit. But that's what it's all about. It's about spreading the athletes out and, and the ones that, one-on-ones, all those different things that you're going to get out there. And, you know, the thing that's really changed is on defense now, they're playing – five and six DBs all the time just because of the RPOs, you know, and the spreading it out part of it. And uh, you mentioned before when, when we played Houston and we had those linebackers covering uh, receivers, which they all could do that. Well, now they're, you know, you'll see, you, you see five DBs or not. So it's, and, you know, nickel guy, which is really a linebacker, and you're down in distance and you can play six DBs. So that's what's changed. The, the, the defense has caught up a little bit. And, and really what they're doing is uh, forcing people to hand that thing off instead of throwing it all the time on the RPOs. Coach, I'm just I'm just really happy that Gino was not a, a great athlete, so he didn't have to run the ball. <laughs> I'm, just happy, I'm just happy he had to throw it. <laughs> well, he had, to, he had to throw it, but he, he knew that if you guys want to get open most of the time. But we'll have conversations, I'm sure, in the next few days about that kind of stuff. But, uh, yeah. Gino can throw. We didn't run a lot of option with Gino, if I remember correctly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So we had a we had that quick passing game, and he got that ball out big time fast. And uh, and that, that's what we were about. I mean, like I said, we were in four wise. We were doing RPO stuff before it was cool. You know? And uh, so, it, and, but but I like what people are doing now. They're spreading it out. Uh, but you're also seeing the teams that. Uh, Really are successful. Run the ball. Now, never changing football. If you want to win a national championship or be the top ten in the country, you better be able to run the football. And and they look around, you know, saving it up and you know, it's all, all the ones that have, have been pretty good and pretty stable throughout, uh, you know, throughout the years. They they run the football. Yeah, the RPO stuff, but they run the football play action out and. and uh, you know, without reading it, and to me that's harder than anything. But they're playing run and they're coming down, and you you fake and and your pass blocking is a closed block, and it's still very very effective because you're getting those safeties and linebackers playing the run. But you got to be able to run it. I, I don't care what anybody says. You've got to be able to run. It. And Gino didn't have to run. He just turned around and hand off to Stephen McGuire. You know that was well, a big yeah, weapon. I mean, yeah, option was not really in our plan and uh uh maybe a little bit later but places that i've been we, we ran the option with it but yeah i mean when you have a good front and you got great running backs so uh, why run the quarterback and uh so he did not he, he handed it off to steve and larry jones and Carl. i mean we had so many backs i mean it was hard to try to find time for all those guys to play yeah Dennis, what goes through your mind watching what Alabama's doing right now? I mean, you know, I remember, you know, back in in the years where we're at the Orange Bowl one year, we're at the Sugar Bowl the next year, and we're thinking, like, this is just automatic every single year that Miami's going to be in the national title hunt. And uh, you were in the middle of the fray, and as the head coach, you were expected to make that happen. Well, Alabama literally is making it happen now in the modern day. When you're watching that, uh, does it bring back memories of when you were in that seat? And uh, what's going through your mind? Well, what Nick's done, and, and you know, they, they run the RPO and spread it out quite a bit. But they run the football. I mean, they run the football. They, they've obviously, uh, you know, got some great talent. I mean, you know, their talent level that they have now is very similar to what we had at Miami back, you know, in the late 80s early 90s i mean we had uh, we had great athletes not out playing passing game and, and uh, 
And that's that's what Nick's done, and you know, he's recruited well. He's come down, as you guys know, into South Florida and taken some awesome players. He's the really, University of Miami, so uh, he's got it. They want to go there. You know, in Alabama, I mean, and you guys know the South. The South, those guys are crazy. I mean, they're crazy football fans, and, and, and they love their football. And players like that. They like to like to go there and and, uh, and when you have the fans like 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 they have in the South. I mean that's the most important thing. You know, if they played college football on Sunday, I don't know who would win, whether it be the church or the football stadium. But uh, that's how that's how I think really like it. So, but the next generation will continue to. Uh, they've got it going right now, and, and uh, there'll be other there'll be other teams that'll catch up as time goes on. Well, Coach, man, I got to tell you, I'm, I'm excited about seeing you, and and uh, we will have a great time. I'm sure we're going to have a great time telling stories and everything else, man. I, I so look forward to seeing you. Uh, did you say you get here tomorrow? Yeah, tomorrow? I'm leaving the, tomorrow. Uh, yeah, I'm leaving tomorrow morning at 6 a.m. I get in tomorrow afternoon, evening. Okay. You guys better get your shoes, get your shoes on right I'm ready, Coach. I'm ready. I'm what ready, do you guys coach. got planned, Lamar? What's on the schedule for this weekend? Fun. 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 <laughs> I'm, I'm, anxious to, I'm anxious to watch, uh, you know, Michigan State's a good football team. And, uh, yeah. you know, Miami, I mean, shoot, they lost to Alabama. It's a lot of power. And as you look at the week goals, you know, everybody's upset because it was a close game against Appalachian State. Well, you know, give them a break. I mean, look at what happened to Florida State, but Jacksonville State. And you can go on and look at. It. I mean, yeah. every given every given Saturday, it's it's, it's different. I mean, it's. I mean, there are, there are players out there that are going to schools that could play a lot of places, and you get those teams together, and you look at what Oregon, Ohio State. Uh, I mean, I mean, you can do you know, University of Montana beat the University of Washington. I mean, so it's. It's happening all over. It's not just happening, you know, in Miami, Florida. And, and I managed to get a chance to watch both games on TV and and uh, and see where, where they're at. Uh, you know, I I like Manny and I, I like what he's doing. I think he's doing better. And, you know, so we'll see. Coach at Miami's not easy. I remember the first year I was there and we uh, went up to Tallahassee yep. and played played against Bobby and, and the semi kick over the Rams in 89, I'll tell you what, man, they had a lot of airplane tickets for me out of town. <laughs> I just we told them to send we money. Going. Said, yeah, they, no way. I don't tickets, just send me cash. I'll get my own way home. <laughs> 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 they didn't have Venmo back then, then, Coach. That's right. Well, you know, now the image deal, I don't even know what the hell that is. But oh. It's a... Uh, but you know it's tough. To, it, it's tough, and then we ended up going undefeated in the national championship, and you know, and can you know, so programs that are like that are, I mean, the expectation you don't lose a game, and that was what the expectation was at Miami when I was there. Don't lose a game, and you figure that out. So, what was that like for you, Dennis? What What was that like to to like that? That's got to be just ridiculous pressure. Well, uh, well, there's a couple of things coming from Pullman, Washington, Miami, Florida. is a little bit of a culture shock. And, uh, <laughs> I'd say that much Just a little. little. And, yeah. Uh, and then, you know, in Miami in those days, you win national championships, and, and that's the expectation. And I knew that going in, and uh, I knew it when I was there. You just lose. I mean, like any games. So I think we lost, what, nine maybe in the six years I was there. And, uh, yeah, but you, but you won, but you won two titles. We won Nobody. two titles and probably should have, should have won, won another one. And, and, you know, that's how it is. If they had, if they had playoffs, you know, who knows how many we would have. But, uh, yeah. you know, it's, yeah. it's just a matter of doing the right thing and, you know, hope Manny, uh, they get better and better all the time. And, and, uh, you know, I'm sure the pressure on him down there is not a, not easy at this point, but it could be in Tallahassee. Yeah, but, exactly. But working, working under that kind of pressure, Dennis, was it? Was it? Did you get to experience the joy of winning those national titles? 
<laughs> did, did you get to working under that kind of pressure? Did you get to experience the joy of winning those national titles? Yeah, for about twenty-four hours. I mean, <laughs> I mean, you're, you, I mean, you're always, you're always on the hot seat. I mean, you yeah. know, in, those, in those days, you didn't have all the crew stuff in, in the hot seats, and they had that. I was on the hot seat probably about every week. But that's just how it is. That's the expectation. That's what it should be. I mean, if you want to be at my family in those days, you know, you know, get out of it. Get out of the kitchen if it gets too hot. So I mean, it's uh, I enjoyed that. I really did. And, and uh, then it was different in those days because you know, the media and, the, and the, you know, the social media and Facebook and all the different things that they have. It's anybody can have anybody. Right? And they have, have, don't have to have any reason. So you know, to me, it's 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 getting kind of ridiculous. And, and you had, Coach, you had a cast of characters. You really did. And, 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 and you should be thrilled because a lot of these guys went on to play in the NFL. A lot of these guys became coaches like Lamar. Now he's in broadcasting. I don't even know if you know this, but Demetrius Pee Wee Smith is in the Calgary Stampeders Hall of Fame. That's how he, that. he, how good he was. Did you know that? He's in the that. Hall I, of Fame. I, 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 I followed Pee Wee up. Yeah. Yeah. I see that. He looks a lot older than he used to when I saw him, saw him here a couple <laughs> months ago on Facebook or whatever. But yeah, yeah. And I, I mean, you look at all those guys. I mean, it's just, it was special for me. I, nobody will have the opportunity that I had to you know, coach at that program for six years with those kinds of guys. It was, it was just so much fun. And, uh, and they got me into it. Right? You know, that Cotton Bowl, uh, the second year, when we – at Texas home, that was got a little ugly. I don't know, I think that might be in a Miami rule. Let me know, Lamar. I don't know. Probably. When Randall Hill ran out of his, when yeah. Randall Hill ran out of the stadium. I, I, I was hoping he wouldn't do that, but he did. Hey, Randall that game. Randall says that on the Notre Dame play when it was third and forty something, he said that you called the draw and he told Craig Erickson, throw me the damn ball. Was it a draw? <laughs> was it a draw? <laughs> you know what, I can't say anything because uh, well, I don't want to get Randall mad at me. <laughs> <laughs> you, you ask him and you ask him that and see if he's a straight face. <laughs> well, it doesn't make any difference. It just makes for good stories, right? I know, I know. It was a hell of a fight. Yeah, wait till I wait till I wait till I finish my book. Then we'll find out. Hey, you write the book? No, no, yeah, I couldn't do that. Hey, coach, <laughs> censored. Coach, I, I, coach, I got to tell you, some, sometimes I would uh, take the plays in, and I don't know why, but. I, the play that you called on the sideline, it didn't sound like what I was telling Gino for some reason. Yeah. I don't know. I, 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 you know, I wasn't the brightest I person. Yeah. <laughs> I wasn't the brightest person taking those plays in sometimes. Sometimes the plays changed on the way to the huddle. I don't know how that happened. <laughs> yeah. you're, so, you're so full of BS. I mean, you fit right into the media. You'd be really good. But, yeah, I know that. You, you don't think I didn't know that? You didn't think I, that I knew that? I knew that. Jeez. What mind? Maybe. Well, yeah. well, Lamar, are you guys playing golf this weekend? Is yeah, golf on the golf. schedule? Yeah, Friday. We're going to play a little golf. Dan, right, Dan, how are you hitting them these days? I'm hitting them, I'm hitting them short and straight. <laughs> you, can't, you can't hit them very far, but I, that's why they have two boxes. You know, the big hitters on the market play way back, and I'll play – you know, up a little bit. So that's only fair, right? Absolutely. You've earned, you've earned that, Coach. You've earned it, Coach. You can play from where you want to. Hey, there's, hey, hey, there's no, way, no way I'm going to play you and play up. I'm going to play right where you play, buddy. <laughs> hey, I got a new hip, Coach. I know. I'm, I have one of those, too. But is yours bionic? Yep, just like yours. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I wish it was. <laughs> But thanks, Coach, man. We sure appreciate you All coming right. on tonight. And I will see you this uh, – I'll see you tomorrow probably. 
Okay. Okay. Hey, guys, so nice talk. Hey, nice talking. Uh, Dennis, so great guys. seeing you again. Yeah, Safe well, travels, Coach. Hey, Bruce, uh, hey, hey, turn on your show. Make sure you're keeping track of him, okay? <laughs> you got it, Coach. You got it. Uh, all right, buddy. I'll talk to you guys Safe later. Travel. See you. Safe Thank travels, you so Coach. much. Bye-bye. Bye. Dennis Erickson, wow. L Lamar, the, the one thing you could say about Coach Erickson is he won two natties. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, he won two. And, yeah. you know, if, if you ask people who's the best coach to, to ever coach at Miami, I don't know that they would say Dennis. Uh, you know, I, I think you'd hear a lot of Jimmy, obviously. Yeah. I think you'd hear some Howard. Yeah. Um, Dennis won two titles. And I know he inherited a heck of a program from Jimmy, but he got it done twice. And, and we played for three. I mean, and you had arguably one of the best teams in the country that with two losses. Uh, year would be Texas. I mean, it was just, um, you know, if we win the, the Alabama game, I wonder if, what the argument would be, you know, because he just, he had some great teams, some really, really great teams that played really hard. And, uh, you know, he let us be us. You know, he, he was, uh, he was stern. A lot of people don't realize that he was very stern on us at points. But for the most part, he showed us a lot of love and compassion, and he wanted us to go out and have fun. That was his whole thing. Go out and have fun and play hard and just try to not make mistakes. And when you, you know, he, coach, coach like he, that, you, you play hard. For him. He talked a little bit about the pressure. Uh, yeah. You know, and, and, you know, it's funny. We talk about the pressure on Manny, but there was nothing like the pressure that was on Dennis Erickson, you know, coming in when he did with, with the program that was left to him. Uh, I mean, he literally was expected to never lose. And I think it ultimately ate him alive. I mean, it, 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 it's like he, he fled for the exits after, you know, after a few years of it. And you really can't blame him. I mean, it, I, I was there for every bit of it, Lamar. And, and I'm telling you, it was suffocating. I, mean, I, I, tell, you, I, I tell you this. Uh, people don't realize this. that You know, he won championships with some really, really good coaches, too. Uh, but Miami really wasn't paying that well back in the day. You know, yeah. people don't, you know, it, it wasn't, um, yeah, you won championships, but you weren't getting paid top dollar like a lot of these other programs. I mean, you would think back in the day we had a, we had it, but no, we didn't. We Our facilities sucked. We only had two jerseys, orange and white, and two pair of pants, orange and white. I mean, I mean, we were not the top. It was not a top program. It was a top program because we won. But it wasn't a top program everywhere else. So you you put that in the mix. Guys were looking to go somewhere else after a while. I mean, yeah, you win national championships, but you're not making as much as these other guys in these other conferences. So these coaches, eventually, they leave, you know, unless you become a head coach. Yeah, well, I would think that the pressure of, of him, for him, can't be as bad as somebody who's two and ten because they they may get fired. He wasn't getting fired. The pressure was really about maintaining. He wasn't going to get fired. You're not. We weren't going to well, go. Well, there there was a. Uh, you know, I've talked to him in length about it. I mean, after the Cotton Bowl, uh, Sankovich wanted to fire him. You know, because of uh, what what we what we did on the field. I mean, it got it got close. He told me, he "Say, Lamar, you don't even know how close it was." And we were like. I, I, I didn't know it was that close. You know, I didn't know it was that close to Jankovic pulling the plug. I mean, I think if he would have done that, it would have caused a big uh, uproar as far as with the players. But uh, he said it was really close. I mean, Jankovic was upset about what happened, embarrassed. We won the game. We actually showed that we were one of the top teams in the country, but we had those penalties. And, uh, you know, he, he called him in there. about uh, You know, he was up for a contract extension. And he would say, hey, you talking about extension. You're talking about firing your ass. So, you know, he, he battled through that. And uh, Coach E is, man, he's a he's a great guy. Again, getting the opportunity to coach with him, it was awesome because he's so knowledgeable. You know, I'm sitting there looking at him, and I'm just hanging on his every word thinking, man, when I was 18, 19, like 19, 20, 21 years old, I was sitting there the same thing. And, uh, you know, he's just so knowledgeable. He's, he's a great coach to be around, great coach to have uh, as a head coach because uh, he loves the coaches. He, he, he coaches. He coaches us. You know, he gives you uh, 
you know, he would pull me aside a lot and say what I'm doing well and what I'm doing bad. And you need that feedback sometimes. It's nothing against it, but I, 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 I definitely enjoyed it. When he was there, Lamar, because I don't remember, was there a lot of coaching turnover or not really? Which is it seems to be a major problem now. It's content. I don't remember uh, that many guys leaving. Do you, Gary? Well, I mean, it wasn't like today. No, it wasn't like today. no. I mean, top dollar, top dollar is going everywhere now. You know, it's uh, guys are always on football scoop looking for the next move. You know, um, Miami is not the. the the upper echelon, I don't think, as far as money um, and, and program-wise. I mean, there are a lot of other programs that are paying a lot more, and there are a lot of other programs where you have more stability. I mean, it's just it's just the way it is. I mean, this is a program where you come in, you're going to have to win because our fan base, just like we talked about, they don't accept. They, they're, they're mad about just barely getting a W. They, they don't accept all that. I mean, it's – it's been proven over the years. We're, there's so much other crap to do in Miami that they can find something else to do on a Saturday afternoon. Unfortunately, we're used to this. It's become yes. it's become the new normal. We're just yes. not expecting to win big games anymore. That's sad. And, and that's just not the way we, we should be. And I think we could turn it around. But I think it starts Saturday. We've got to beat Michigan State. Hey, so Lamar, you, you, think they, um, you think they still have Dennis Erickson merchandise at all canes? <laughs> we might have some of those hats that he used to wear like this. You know, I know, I know they still have a few. Of, I know they still have, they still have a few of the Al Golden tie shirts in, in, the, back, in the back closet. But I don't, I don't know if, if, if Harry still has um, Dennis Erickson shirts. You need to go buy them out. You need to go buy them out. Those, uh, those all. Awesome. Right? I think they are back there too. I, I've been back in the back, and Harry. There might be a couple back there. You know, Harry. <laughs> Harry has he has so much merchandise back there, man. I'm like, hey, man, we're gonna put this out on the on the shelf. I will. It just takes time, Lamar. It takes time. Well, they're honoring the 1991 team this week at All Canes, and uh, with the with the big reunion this weekend and the celebration at the stadium on Saturday, Harry's opening up All Canes at 8 a.m. on Saturday morning. 8 a.m. <laughs> So those of you that are driving up from the south um, can make a little pit stop there and uh, tell him that you want a Dennis Erickson shirt for the reunion <laughs> and, 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 and see what he says and, uh, you know, and, and report back to us next week. Um, do, they have, do they have any 36 jerseys, Lamar? Do you no, know? man. They're, they're all Benny Blaze jerseys, man. Oh, that's what they are. Okay. <laughs> and Marty Sykes. I can see, I can see that. I but yeah, all, all canes the the number one cane shop since 1958. Uh, you can shop if you don't live in the southern part of South Florida. You can go to allcanes.com and get all your canes gear. 365 days a year, Harry's always on the lookout for the latest and greatest stuff. And uh, like like we said earlier in the show, I mean it, it, it's really like family down there. And uh, the reason that all canes is a sponsor of this show is that Lamar is family to all canes and and. Right. and and vice versa. Hey, so, by the um, way, I used, I used to model for him. I, model. <laughs> I remember. I remember you did that. Yeah, I used to model, man. You can still do it. So, hey, man. So, hey, Harry, if you're listening, Lamar wants to model the new turnover chain tees and stuff. So, so uh, you got, let, you let's out put them up. You got to be winning. <laughs> uh, you know, it's funny. Somebody, somebody shot me a message today. With this NIL, they, they want to have um, a player call their kid to sing happy birthday. <laughs> um, yeah, so, I mean, it'll, it'll, be, it'll be interesting to see how that goes. All right, well, but we, hey, know, we know Melvin could do the bar mitzvahs. That we already heard. So. <laughs> hey, um, but Lamar, they missed, they missed Dennis, un, un, unfortunately, but they'll get to spend some time with him this weekend. But we got a couple, a couple visitors in the lobby. We got your center, Mr. Kelvin Harris. Adam. Oh. Wait, let me Sweet. get this, let, let, let me let me let me get that out of the way. We got your Sweet. center, Kelvin Harris, and we got and we got the quarterback that wishes that they ran the RPO back in 1991. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Now he just uh, handed was, it off to Steven. He ain't interested in running the ball. That, that was that was the last time the speed option was run at the University of Miami in 1989 <laughs> at Florida State, and, and I still remember after the timeout that was that was like our uh, let's see that was that was a meeting of the minds, and I remember Coach E saying. 
listen, Alex Johnson's in the backfield. You're getting any kind of trouble. Just pitch it to him. There was some <laughs> defensive lineman in my lap. I threw it to AJ. I think he got hit by eight guys. <laughs> like, oh, that's not a good one. <laughs> Gino, Dennis was just on the show talking about how he wishes that he could have used you in the run game. <laughs> uh, he, he did use me in the run game. I audible to three techniques and the draws and things like that and out of the run game when, when I knew we could throw it better than we could run it. That's That's how he used me in the run game. <laughs> man, I would be so hot with Gino when he was running. Hey, man, what you running for, man? You got to get down, bro. You got to get down. I was telling him, get down, get down. <laughs> and and, and Lamar, Lamar just admitted to Dennis that he used to change the plays on his way to the huddle to make sure that he got enough balls in a, in a game. Oh, it was uh, – yeah, that was that was something, Coach. I, I You know what I did? The, the bad thing was I thought, I thought I was a cerebral quarterback. I never could figure out why Lamar – who I knew, he knew every receiver position in every route. Why he asked me break in the huddle or made it a point to say, ask me, hey, do I got the square in here? Do I got the Z in? Do I got the under? And I'm like, huh? yeah. And I was like, he was always making sure if he was lining up at X, Z, or tailback, I knew exactly where he was. It basically went like this, G. Hey, G, I got that post, right? Hey, and you know what? You got to do what you got to do. I mean, you you just you you just you just stepped up in front of your boys. You know, you took K Dubs balls and High C's balls and Spence, and they got all pissed at you. You know, I made it up to him at, at the club. Sure hey, Calvin, did. let's I'm let sure we got Calvin Harris on here too. Calvin, let's let you get a word in here. Um, the reunion this weekend, getting all the guys back together. What's it? What's it mean to you? You know. Um, a lot of these guys I talk to on a you know, not necessarily regular basis, but I talk to them. But there's some guys that you don't see, you know, who are out of town. Um, there's a couple of guys that I thought I'd see this weekend, but I guess they they couldn't make it. But you know, I talk to Gino every now and then, and you know, Daddy Daycare over there. I talk to him all the time. But there are some, wow, some, wow. there's some, you know, there's some sorry, guys. Sorry, um, it, <laughs> hey, is Kevin Williams coming in? I, don't I know. did I not gotta... see his name. I know. I know Jesse was trying. He wasn't sure because uh, he thought he would have the weekend off if the Giants won. But uh, as uh, the Giants, I don't think they've won in a couple seasons. <laughs> they didn't win. So he, yeah, that's not going to happen sure for about ten if, weeks. Uh, if he's going to make it out or not. I wonder if High is going to show up. Yeah, you know. I need High Seas. Oh wow! Yeah, I know. That's uh, I know Rick told me that. The posse. I mean, where's where's Dub? Where's I C? Where's Spence? Spence? I mean, I need to call him up. I should call him up. I need I need high C. I, I need to hear one good time. A T. A T. I C go deep. I C go deep. <laughs> Tell Gino. I C go deep. Hey, hey, Gino. Is your boy? Is your boy? One Chris last time. Coming right. Chris T. Jones will be there. Cobra head. All right. Cobra. All right. Hey, G Gino, one last time, if, if Horace shows up, you need to write the plays in the dirt for him. Just one last time. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. High C, high C knew his routes. It was a go route. And, and a hit. Or a stop route. route an 88X. <laughs> 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 hey, let's talk about our center play, man. I mean, this guy. I mean, Gino, when you saw a gap pressure with Kevin Harris at the center, I know you got nervous. Oh yeah, <laughs> it, 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 I don't know if it was well. It, it, it was better than Simonette because he couldn't hear, so <laughs> yeah. you know we had, we had to deal with that. And then uh, yeah, well, you, you got know, you got stuck with it. Wasn't necessarily Kelvin. It was probably more like making sure Rudy and Claude were on board oh. with whatever Kelvin was doing. So you know oh, that was that was gosh. the uh, and Rudy, the, the Rudy best, didn't know the play. Best is when Kelvin when Kelvin when Kelvin tried to act like a Rhodes Scholar out there started calling fronts and then Leon right. would call him out yelling at him and man shut up. <laughs> hey hey Leon, Leon couldn't even spell his own name so you know. <laughs> hey, all, so all right wrong. all right sweet let me ask you a question sweet sweet. <laughs> I'll just yeah. I'll just leave it at sweets. I won't even go to the other part. But sweets, let me ask you a question. Give me your state of the program right now. Tell me what's what, what what's going on and how can it how can it improve? 
Hold on, hold on. Yeah. Those rose-colored glasses he's got on, because I think he was going for 15 0 at the start of the season. Yeah, I'm just making he was sure he going 15 0. I was going to bring that up. He's got rose-colored glasses on. I was going to bring that I, up. But I got to put my cane shades on when Kelvin's talking. <laughs> <laughs> ouch, ouch, ouch. Hey, we, we, had, a cross, we had a crossroads right now because we got to win this game. Um, I think the kids are honestly – the kids are starting to feel the pressure. And there's a couple of them I question why they even came back because it's like if you're not going to go out there and play like you're trying to get drafted, you need to move out the way and let somebody else move in, which actually is happening because one of those guys got replaced this week. Um, I don't know. You know, these kids are so different from us. I mean, um, you know, like I was me and Gino and Steve uh, and Leon did a thing with Joe Zagaki and I brought up in 89, you know, Gino was a red shirt freshman and Craig got hurt and he just jumped right in there and led us to a victory. It's like nowadays you don't know if kids can do that. It's like they're so fragile. <laughs> and it's like if something bad happens, they just don't respond. And it's like, well, what was you doing all this work in the summer? And watching all this film for if you're just going to let the first time you get punched in the mouth break you down. So, you know, they practice good, but then they get in the game and some of them just don't show up. Like last week, 85 and 3 didn't show up. I mean, I blame you for that, Lamar. <laughs> Any receiver, I'm blaming you. On. No, I got my shade on. I'm, I got one eye shade. Let's go. <laughs> I can't take all the blame now. Let's go. Huh? I mean, that, that, that ain't my fault. I mean, that ain't my fault, though. I mean, let's talk about that offensive hey, line. Man. Yeah, you said, that line. you said. Well, yeah. Yeah, you know, here's the thing. And and I have no problem saying it. Fifty five, because I'm not using his name. He doesn't deserve to have his name used right now. Fifty five <laughs> is in the way because you don't, you know, you don't have another year. And so it's like, why did you come back? You know, we, you know, those are reps that somebody else could be getting that wants to play, and you can't go out there and just look like that. I mean, you're three hundred fifty five, three hundred sixty pounds. You're supposed to be dominating, and it's like. But but Kelvin, you know, was that like, even an option? I, I mean, like I wouldn't I wouldn't think Coach E or or Coach Smith would just say, "Hey, you're the senior and you're playing." I mean, Rudy was a sophomore in you know when I mean, heck, he was a freshman. I think in '91. I mean, we weren't. No, we he was a he was a sophomore. Yeah, he was a sophomore. Okay. Yeah, he was but, a sophomore. But you're not. You know what I mean? He's not. He's not going to sit behind a, a senior just because it's a senior. So I don't I don't well, think I, I mean to me it seems like there there's there's communication issues up front and and the old line coach said it we had multiple communication issues there's communications in the defensive secondary and, and blitzes and I, I I don't know if 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 I'm coaching any level and there's communication problems I, I would simplify I mean I you know it's not I mean like Steve mentioned a couple of days ago when we did the show we had inside outside zone and draw. Encounter. We had four running plays. You know, I mean, yeah. just keep it simple. And, that, and, that was four and, and don't minutes. worry about what the hell the other team's doing and, and execute. I mean, come on. Now, we're, we're, we're talking about a team that we're supposed to have a lot better talent than. And I know this, that if we, if we were playing that team, it would have been how quickly can we score points and get out of the game. And you guys would have been like, let me let us run the ball to try to get some stats, you know, for the old line. So I, I just that's what that's where I just think to me, it's, you know, people say, well, they're letting the older guys play. I don't I mean, well, you can't blame. That I don't necessarily. Player. I mean, well, no, get Garen. Garen's not necessarily letting the older play player play. Excuse me. Nerva actually practiced good. And then as it goes back to. They're just not showing up game today because, you know, I've talked to him quite a bit and 55 practice good, but then he gets in the game and it's just not there. So you got to well, move on. Well, first of all, and on, honestly, first of all, wait, wait, Kevin. First of all, the problem is you shouldn't be talking to him. Okay, that's probably why he's playing bad. 
I mean, that's that's the problem right there in the cell. They need to block your ass from calling these kids, and maybe they can block. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not talking. I'm Gary Justice, but I talked to Kelvin. He told me to do it this way. <laughs> Kelvin, who, who the hell is Kelvin? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm talking about the old line coach. I ain't talking to I, you. Know, oh, oh, okay. I ain't talking to this guy. This guy. <sighs> I mean, the leave our players alone, man. Maybe we can win some damn games. You don't talk to them. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. Damn, now hey, I see what you know, the problem in all, is. In all serious now, we brought this up before, uh, Calvin and Gino. There's been five guys. Hillary, Herbert, Reed, Campbell, and now Scaife. All high four-star guys that came into this program, and here we are three, four years later, they're no better. Now, that's just total lack of development of these kids. That's why the line is having these problems. These guys are four well, or five years sitting on a bench. I, 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 listen, I, I, I don't know if that's necessarily the, the development or – or be, believing in the star rating and yeah. and not doing your own homework. Yeah. I mean, I, I think that, you... that, that I, don't, I don't know. I don't know which of, of that, but there, there's, you know, if you well, look at, I, I'll you take... know, I mean, Alabama, it comes down to you got, if, if half your roster is four and five star players, basically that you got a shot to win the championship. And if it's not, you, you don't. Um, so I don't know if it's development. I don't know if it's, you know, I, I mean, well, part I, of it I'll might tell you be right now, they've had multiple OCs, you know. No, I'll tell you right now, 57. I'm gonna use 57. Well, I can't curse on your show, but I'm gonna say this he ain't got no heart. He's had three offensive line coaches, and he done laid down like a prostitute in the Vegas hotel room for three <laughs> offensive line coaches. <laughs> you say a prostitute in Vegas, okay. All right. Yeah, that's a that, that, that's a tough analogy, Kelvin. That's a tough one, right there. No, Kelvin. you know. Well, look, I'm gonna say this. You what know, you we put we put a lot of this on coaches, but it's a Kelvin, lot of hard. What, what happened to your rose colored glasses? I remember reading fifteen and zero. <laughs> hey, I remember now. fifteen like, and hey, zero. You know, you know, the week two before, two before the throw. Alabama game, he had me on the phone for half an hour trying to convince me that we yeah, had more talent than Alabama. He said they don't match we up. We had a chance. Trying to tell me. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I mean, look, the guy was look. We on got feed down with Manny all summer. Okay, they had the PR <laughs> thing down pat. They had the PR <laughs> thing down pat. I'm telling you. Hey, hey, he gave me a special coach's shirt. I, 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 I gotta <laughs> confess. <laughs> no, you know, but the the sad uh, part about it is, you know, a lot of these kids. Their family members are the biggest problem because you got the uncle that just got out of prison telling him, you know, stuff in his head. And these guys think that they know more than, um, you know, the coaches or, you know, guys like us who play. But then you got I think the biggest problem I see with this whole thing, not just with us, but the whole thing is the people who are giving these four and five star ratings. Not one of them played a down of football. And I tell coaches all the time, I think I told you before, Lamar, how are you going to put your job on the line uh, using something from somebody who didn't play a down of football? Yeah, they're you telling be doing you doing your own evaluations, no doubt. Mm -hmm. right. but, there's, but there's so many lazy coaches out there that it's not happening. They're using these 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 guys to tell them like you not I'm not gonna believe the best receiver in the country is from Tacoma, Washington. I'm sorry, I'm just not believing that. <laughs> He's from Pinole, California. <laughs> well, That's you, right, you know baby. who you know who would argue with you about that is one of your former teammates, who's the head coach out at Oregon, yes. who recruited the top player in nine different states last year, Kelvin, and they just went to Ohio State. And, and beat the Buckeyes at home. I mean, that was pretty what? impressive. But 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 he he's doing it on behind recruiting and identifying the best players in different states around the country because they don't have any in-state talent at, at Oregon. So um, yeah, but his base his base is California, and he and because USC is down right now, he is just poaching Cali, just poaching it. 
Yeah, but the but the point I'm making is he's finding players everywhere. Like he's he's finding uh, uh, the best receiver in Mississippi, for example, and things like that. Uh, so there is talent have out you, there. Have you seen the facilities at Oregon? I mean, he's got an open checkbook. Phil Knight knows he's about to die any day, and he is just <laughs> tossing all the cash out in the world to make that program hopefully win a championship before he kicks the bucket. And Whoa. I mean, you got Nike money. <laughs> Man, you're terrible, Kelvin. I don't know. Hey, <laughs> I, I, hey, last, see this last Bo time I right here? facilities, they won no games. <laughs> hey, Kevin, you see this Bo Camper wings right here? These Bo Camper wings? Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you about 240 now, ain't you? Bo Camper. No, no, he's, no he's, skinny, he's skinny again. He got a new he's hip. Skinny, oh, oh new yeah. Hip, yeah, he's going to be on, just like Seth. He's going to be. You're going to be spearfishing like sap soon. So uh, let me ask Gino. So do you think this is a fixable thing, this offensive line? Because we were talking before. I think we have skilled people, but the offensive line, in my opinion, is what's holding everything back, including the Eric King. I don't, I just don't know if they can get the running game going with all the problems on the line. It's passing. I don't know if he's got an arm issue. He had a few throws into the dirt. Um, but I just think the offensive line's got to come together in order for the offense to start to gel. Your thoughts? Well, I think I think Derek has has been tentative. It seems to me, and I don't know that if that's his knee. You know, throwing the ball, not not throwing with a lot of confidence, um, and even tentative on the running side. You know, I think that you know I would say more than half of his strength is is ability to run the ball, and I think it's almost like he's trying to force throwing the the ball instead of just you know taking the run. Um, you know, as far as the offensive line, listen, I, you know, I think Lamar can attest to that. But when, you know, Kelvin and, and Leon and Claude left our junior year, I would Oof. probably put our Oof. offensive line in 92 um, was not trash at the trash level. <laughs> That's and, trash. And, and, and I think that, you know, okay, we, we made it through regular season undefeated. Um, and I think that w- what you have to do is you have to be accurate with the ball. You have to, you know, you have to pick your spots to, to take it downfield. Um, Trust other guys need Trust to step up. They, they, if they have playmakers, if, if three, Kelvin said three didn't play last week. I didn't see him play against Alabama either. I was broadcasting the game. I was like, where is he? I mean, he got Mike off one or two bubble screens. You know, it's like. When you, other guys have to step up for your offense and take some heat off of the offensive line, so I think there is that that possibility. Um, I, well, it's just I think how, I think they made the right adjustment. It? We just we just I mean with 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 us we kind of masked our offensive line with putting five wide receivers off the field and saying, okay, we'll go in the gun and and we're gonna throw it quick and we're gonna get it to the receivers' hands and. And see if Kevin or Lamar or Horace or those guys can make a play, and not, they didn't need to break it. They just need to get a first down. And we you, we, we kind of masked our deficiencies of an offensive line that way. So I think there's you know maybe maybe some some other things like that schematically. Um, I think so. You can, I think you might have the right. There are ways. I think you may have the right seven. five this time. No, I I think the adjustment that he made this week may be the right five. Number 70 was not supposed to be playing tackle, but 51 played so bad that he shot him out there. But that guy's a guard. And Jared Williams, I think his hand is fully healthy. He's going to get his shot. If he can play good, that'll solidify it. And I think, honestly, I think Eric is tentative from when Chris Stalin hit him and caused that fumble. I think it's still in his mind. And I think this week the O-line has to play solid to make him feel comfortable. But number three and number 85 got to show the hell up. If 85 catches that ball um, early in the game, that changed the whole outlook of the game. And, you know, you I don't know if you realize this, Gino, but 91, you know how many, how many snaps of shotgun we ran? Uh, Zero. Probably a lot. No. No. Please. 91, we didn't run a snap of shotgun. I didn't learn how to well, shotgun snap. That's because you couldn't snap the ball on shotgun. So we had to get <laughs> I was about to say that. 
dog. You might have been if PFF was out, your rating would have been down every week. <laughs> I mean, come on, man. You were the weak link on the offense, man. Come on, I, man. Said, I remember Coach Erickson in the summer when you guys left. He goes, "We're gonna we're gonna run a lot of shotgun." He goes. We don't think you're going to get killed if we don't. And I'm like, oh, okay, all right. <laughs> well, let's be honest, Gino. He didn't say that. He said, we're going to run the shotgun because Kevin Harris is gone. And that, that bitch was terrible. I mean, let's just be honest. I mean, let's be honest. I mean, I was in the meeting. I mean, let's just tell the real truth, Gino. Hey, hey, hey all right, LeBron. Yeah, you, yeah, you brought him, you brought him his coffee. A, Terrell started a full season. They got benched the next year. How's, how, oh, does yeah. that, how does that work? I mean, come on now! Yeah, <laughs> wow. Hey, yeah. one of um, one of our viewers, Mark Pearl, he he's got the whole program figured out here, guys. He's got the he's got his dream coaching staff: Ed Reed, head coach; Lamar is OC, and Warren Sapp is DC. Wow. We don't have no running wow. backs. <laughs> <laughs> we gonna throw that bitch every play. <laughs> you gonna fire me because <laughs> hey, man, they don't run the ball. You're right. <laughs> We pass it every down. <laughs> the, hey, one the, of the, the one main of the, office uh, is five wise. Hey, one of the one of the uh, one of the callers or one of the comments was Kevin Harris sucked as a as a center. It's right there on the right side. <laughs> Who said that, Mark Caesar? No, Lamar Thomas. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> so. Hey, so Kevin, man, we we appreciate you coming on. I really wanted you on because I really wanted to get on you about that fifteen and zero. That was I. I knew you had been drinking the Manny Diaz coffee or Kool well, or whatever. The hey, hell. look. What what made you hey, think look, that we can go fifteen and zero? I'm on, I'm gonna say this. I told this to I told this to the O line coach after the game. I said you can't want it more than they do. <laughs> I mean, it's that simple. I mean, when you look at the team, the, the, the on paper, the talent is there. But if they don't have a heart muscle, you can't factor that in. You don't know until the game starts. But, hey, you know, they are the ones. Look, Lamar, you've been in, in that suite, and I think, Gino, you have been too, where all the guys with rings are in there, and we having our stories. And then you look at the current guys. And they feel uncomfortable and it's awkward because they got no stories. All they got is bad times. And that's when the regrets start to go in because they got it's like they looking back at their career and say, we wasted four or five years of our life. And now we got to hear about it from these dudes because, you know, we ain't the most uh, humble people. So, I mean, I mean, listen, I sent him, I told Mike Harley this. I said, don't leave you in with regrets. And then I sent him a picture of my three rings. I said, Joe, playboy, I just want you to get one of these. It's up to you. So, hey, either they're going to drop their cojones. And I don't want to curse on your show. Either going to drop their cojones or they're going to they're gonna go down as the clowns, just like all the other 15 teams that have lost in the last 15, 20 years. It's up to them. Hey, hey, Gino. Uh, let's talk about some good times. Let's talk about this weekend. How much fun we're gonna have this weekend? You know, Friday night. Is Thursday anybody night, gonna Friday out drink Coach Erickson? We're gonna have fun. I man. couldn't help it. I know you couldn't. It's gonna be fun to see all those guys. I mean, obviously we see each other, but having the rest of those guys around. And uh, hopefully, hopefully we'll see some good things out there on the field on Saturday. That's what I'm hoping. That for. that that, that is that is yeah. for sure, LT. We're gonna uh, we're gonna have some. Uh, let's see. We'll, we'll try to hit the little white golf ball straight on uh, on Friday, and then uh, have some drinks and some guards on Friday. So who's evening. gonna win? Who's gonna who's, who's gonna, gonna win, win on Friday? You you or Lamar? Uh, I don't know. I haven't picked up a club in a few months. So uh, probably more. Really? I'm, I'm just coming off a of hip surgery, so you know. Yeah, so I I, I don't know. It, it 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 gets too hot. I'm too old to play golf. In this so, um, we'll, we'll we'll see how his. Uh, hey, how is Fire Marshall Bill coming in? in? Ryan McNeil. Who's that? Ryan yeah. McNeil. You know, yes, you know the guy coming. we burned. You know the guy we burned every day in practice. He is coming. He is coming. 
Hey, he he like to deny this, but when he was a freshman and was on the scout team, Randall used to beat him so bad that Mark Caesar came up with the siren. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Kelvin, are they going to are they going to push you out through the smoke in a wheelchair, or are you going to be a walker? Are you gonna use a cane or a walker? Huh? I'm going to walk out there. I ain't jogging. Hey, dog. But he will have his backpack on. That's for sure. Have backpack. Don't no travel. There he is. Hey, no, don't fall. Hey, I got like 50, smoke, I got fifty. <laughs> don't fall, dog. No, no, the, the only good thing, one of the few good things about the Hard Rock is there's not that damn sewer grate. At the start of oh, the grass yeah. coming out the tunnel in the Orange Bowl, dude just bite it. <laughs> oh, yeah, man. Yeah. I, I've seen some people bite it. So it's, uh, yeah. like, man, it's going to be fun, man. I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing you guys. And uh, thank you guys for coming out tonight uh, on the show, man. It's uh, always good to see you, Gino. Kevin, I can't say the same. But uh, how, how yeah. come I wasn't invited to wings? I mean, I'm a little disappointed, LT. I didn't know you had a wing situation working. Yeah, it's, it's oh, you can go eat with LT every Wednesday night now, Gino. Uh, oh, camp, uh, dog. I moved up, baby. <laughs> oh, Campbell. Mm, 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 mm. Hey, mom. Hey, my mama sent a message, uh, text message. Don't you start smacking. <laughs> 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 okay, mama. <laughs> All right, wow. I'll see. I'll see Thank you, you guys, uh, man. We'll talk to you. Yep. I'll see you. Yeah. Guys. Thank Ooh. you, guys. <laughs> All right. Peace out. Yeah, no. What characters? Oh, my God. We could go on for days, man. Oh, that, that, that was awesome. All right, LT. Um, let me see. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to think if, if, if you yeah, know, there were, yeah, there, let, 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 let's, I had a couple more things I wanted us to talk about tonight, and then we'll, then we'll get to our little word association game at the end. All right. Um, All right. We saw receivers dropping balls last week. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it, you're, you know, obviously you were a receiver. What, what, what what's behind dropping balls? Um, you got to have confidence in your hands. Uh, Rob Likens, you know, him and I have text back and forth, and it's just guys who need to have more confidence in their hands and you know stop trying to make catches with the body. You, know, you got to have confidence in your hands, and it starts with practice. So, you know, I kind of relayed some things, some 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 tips to him that hopefully can help him out. Um, he just said, you know, guys are making plays, but I want to see them have more confidence in their hands, and uh, that that's that can be a problem sometimes because you know you got to have as, as a receiver on this level playing against good competition, you're going to have to catch the ball with your hands and not your body. So. They'll, you know, he sounds like uh, he's going to put him to the test this week, and uh, hopefully we'll see something good on Saturday. All right, uh, Bruce, we're going to um, let you depart and uh, go get ready for bed. Uh, th- thank, thank you, as always, for being the voice of the fan and being uh, part of the show. Um, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll see you again next week. Right, Lamar, Don't go, I, uh, Bruce. Don't go, Bruce. <laughs> Happy New Year to my Jewish friend, Lamar Thomas. That's right. That's right. Hey, you want me? Hey, hey you want to be story, quickly? Tell him the story about the donuts. That they they turned out to be bagels. Tell, tell Gary that quickly. So, so I had a Jewish roommate, David Levins. Uh, we moved in together. I think my senior year. I've never lived with a Jewish guy, and you never lived with a black guy. <laughs> and uh, I, we taught each other a lot of stuff. I introduced him to the ghetto boys, and uh, he introduced me. Well, he didn't really actually introduce me, but I came home one day, and I said, damn, look at that big-ass donut on the table. I'm going to tear that up. So I thought it was a glazed donut. Freaking bagel, man. I said, what the hell is this? This is the nastiest donut I've ever had in my life. Yeah. So I, I, when he came, I said, man, what's up with these donuts, bro? He said, bro, those aren't donuts. Those are bagels, man. You put locks and you put cream cheese. And I'm like, yeah. <laughs> so that's my that's my view. All right. See you guys All next right. week. Go take it. All right, right Bruce. Thank you. All right, LP. Um, let, let, let's um, let's play a little word association here and and and, and take it home. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna add one or two actually. Um, Michigan State. Good team. Uh, a team that I watched last year. 
against um, uh, Ohio State, right? Ohio State. I yeah. got the chance to thanks you know I got the chance to do this game for touchdown radio. And uh they were a team that played Ohio State well. Uh you could tell that Mel Tucker has those guys playing hard. Um last year I saw uh some flashes of some good stuff. And you know, it's carried over now. They're playing good ball, uh, they're a tough team, and they they're gonna come in here. I talked to Courtney Hawkins, uh, the receiver coach. They're not afraid. They're going to come in here and give it everything they have uh, because they, they know that this is not the same you that's on the 30 for 30. So they're looking at a, an opportunity to come down here and play against a, a decent, a decent University of Miami football team. And hopefully, hopefully the Canes show up this weekend. You know, I, you so badly want to see them put a good game together and get some momentum going, make everybody feel better about the program and where things are going, and and recruits and and you know on and on and on. Uh, it needs to happen this weekend. This is the last chance before the conference schedule kicks in to to build confidence. I mean, Central Connecticut isn't going to cut it. Uh, this is it right here this Saturday. I mean, they they got to show that they can line up against a real football team and get things done. And um, so it, it's going to be a big day. All right, uh, noon kickoff, Lamar. Ooh, first of all, noon kickoff. Hot, 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 hot. And oh, yeah, I'll be out there at the crowded tent, you know, with the uh, 50, 50 state vodka, having a good time, you know, before the game. So come on out there and... You get a free shot and put your stage back at the crowded tent, but it's going to be hot. It's going to be very hot. And, uh, you know, I used to love being at the Orange Bowl and hearing the announcer say the temperature is 97 degrees with humidity, and you're watching those guys just work. I mean, you can see the shoulders slump. And you're like, oh, we got these guys. It's going to be hot. And uh, it's not going to be a high 97, but a 12 o'clock kickoff for guys coming down from Michigan State. They're going to have to be ready. Uh, by the fourth, third or fourth quarter, we will see some of them will. So, you know, hopefully that plays to our advantage. You coached at Kentucky. I mean, kind of similar type of scenario to coming down from Michigan. Uh, how does the heat impact those players? Oh, it impacts. Uh, we got smashed one time by the University of Florida, and it was so hot that day. Yeah, but it, it definitely impacts you. You know, the weather's different. It's cool up north, and you get down here, and you see guys. I mean, even as a coach, you, and I live down here, to be in that type of heat, man, you can't hardly breathe. I mean, it is, it, it, it's stifling. So, I mean, you have to get over that. And hopefully you build enough uh, momentum because it's going to happen. Guys are going to catch cramps. I mean, and it's going to come at some, some weird times of the game, so you have to be prepared for that. Guys have to be ready on the sideline. We always talk about, hey, watch your, watch your brother out there because he could go down and need you to run in there, you know, so whether on the defense side or the offense side. All right, uh, De'Ara King. Derek King, my guy, he has to play better this week. You know, he has to continue to, I think, uh, you know, uh, make some good reads. Uh, he's going to have to continue to use his feet. You know, the only way I, I feel comfortable, just like he did at the end of the game, using his feet. I mean, he can run. He can he can get out of the pocket. He has to be able, uh, we have to be able to call some plays on the run where he's rolling out the pocket, give him a run option, pass type. Uh, atmosphere or play call, uh, you know, he had some errant throws last week, but I, I really believe this kid is going to um, settle down and uh, understand that hopefully his off offensive line gets better and he'll have time to make some throws. Mel Tucker. Mel Tucker, the head coach of Michigan State, uh, has a he's, a he's a great coach. He's a, a great motivator, hard-nosed guy. He's a the type of guy you would expect to coach at Michigan State. And he has this program rolling, and he's well-respected in the coaching uh, fraternity. And he'll have these guys playing well. And they'll, they'll you know, he's a hard-nosed guy, 
I know that's what that's what type of team he wants to build. A hard nosed, very, very uh, you know, he's very he's just a very hard nosed and his teams play like that. So it's gonna be interesting to see how this thing plays out with Manny against Mel Tucker and both teams being kind of opposite. They're going to come down and, and try to smash mouth, I think. I mean, they, they've got an offensive line playing as well as any offensive line in college football right now. A running out, back they to put out a, number two, right? They graded out number two. Uh, yeah. The second best offensive line in the country. Last yeah, year, right? and, and their running back had 260 against Northwestern. So, you know, they've proven they can run the ball. And I got to think that when they're looking at Miami's front seven on tape, that they're thinking we got to we got to pound these at, pound it at these guys. So Miami's gonna have to step up and be physical. Uh, they're gonna have to wake up early and and be ready to play a man's game. Uh, I think at noon on Saturday. And that's the type of game Mel wants. He wants to smash well, smash game and, and play action over the top. Uh, get your guys up. They got some good receivers, and pretty good quarterback. So it's gonna be interesting to see how this happens. And the Miami secondary has got to stop busting coverages. Yes. Most definitely. You gotta stop. You can't have bust. You gotta make tackles and you gotta knock some balls down. You gotta you gotta make some plays downfield. I mean, those are veterans, Lamar. These are guys that have played a lot of football. Man, if Manny can't count on them, it's it's you know, who, who can he count on? If he can't count on, on Bubba and Gervin and those guys, uh, you know, you tell me he has to put James Williams and Cam Kitchens out there as true freshmen with the game on the line. I mean, you know, the, you know, that could get kind of scary in its own uh, right. So he needs those guys to, to step up and be accountable. He definitely needs them to step up. I know T-Rob and, and uh, DVD are probably scratching their heads every day. But uh, I, I think they'll be able to get it right at some point. I mean, those two good quality coaches, an uh, older coach and a nice, new, young, fresh coach uh, bringing good energy to that room. So hopefully they'll get it right. All right, the 1991 Miami Hurricanes. Oh, man, the team. It's, uh, oh, there's the rain right there, 1991. <laughs> fun team, fun team. Lots of great times. We'll all be there in attendance. Uh, I can't wait to see my, my guys, my brothers. Um, you know, it's hard for, for us to watch a game together and not be critical. So it's going to be interesting to hear some of the, uh, the comments. So I might have to uh, to remove myself and try to go to the press box with you so I can actually watch the game and not yeah. hear some of the comments. How about that? That sounds like a plan. Uh, good thing or bad thing that the game's at noon for you guys? I mean, it's going to cut into the party for sure. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's definitely going to cut into the party. But, you know, this will be good. I hope, I hope I hope the crowd shows up, and I hope you guys get get the reception that you guys deserve, because uh, you know that was a special time in Miami football history. You know the the, the, the late eighties, early nineties, and it's going to be great to see you guys get back together. All right, here we go. Take us home. Final word association. Manny right. Diaz. Oh, my main man, Manny Diaz. All right, Manny. It's time for us to uh, win the ball game. That we're kind of close to or whatever. We got to win the ball. Okay, we got to play well. You're learning on the run. You've had a year and three games. You're learning, and you're going to, going to continue to learn. But this is a big game in your coaching uh, resume. On your coaching resume, this is a huge game for you right now. So, Manny, I'm I'm asking you to have those guys ready. Not gonna not have them ready in front of the 1991 team, in front of all our fans that are wanting to see something great happen. We need you to have these guys prepared. Come on, man. I want to drink the Kool Aid, not the water. All right, I want to drink the Manny Diaz Kool Aid. So I'm counting on you, buddy. Let's go, man. Let's go, Manny. Let's go. <laughs> All right, LT, um, let's do a final thank you to All Canes, our presenting sponsor of the Lamar Thomas Show this season, and our new sponsor, Bo Camper Sports Grill in Miramar, uh, where Lamar is now. And uh, you can see we, he's having a good time there eating those wings and, and, and food. And uh, Lamar, we're going to let you go get a little dessert. And then, yeah. uh, and then I know you got to get home and put the kids to bed because you are still daddy daycare. 
Uh, that's Transition that's your service. <laughs> <laughs> that's your number one role in life to these days. And uh, we'll see you at the stadium on Saturday. And looking forward to it. And uh, like you said, hopefully the Canes give everybody something to be happy and cheer about. So for Lamar Thomas, Bruce Warner, Gino Toretta, Dennis Erickson, Kelvin Harris, I'm Gary Furman. Thank you for joining us again this week on the Lamar Thomas Show. We'll see you next Wednesday, everybody. Go Canes.